The world is changing. Inspiration is everywhere. It has never been so easy to connect, share, and bring people together. We're learning from others and finding the best in ourselves. Challenging our beliefs. Sharing our vulnerability. Overcoming our fears. Transforming ourselves so we can transform the world. How far can we go? This is London Real. I am Brian Rose. My guest today is... This is London Real. I am Brian Rose. My guest today is Grant Cardone, the best-selling author, entrepreneur, sales guru, and motivational speaker. You are considered one of the wealthiest real estate investors in the world, with your Cardone Capital Fund now managing over $4.5 billion in assets. You were named the number one marketing influencer to watch by Forbes magazine. You are a regular commentator on Fox News and CNBC, and you've been featured in Success Magazine, Business Insider, and The Huffington Post. You're the author of eight books, including the New York Times bestseller, If You're Not First, You're Last, Sell or Be Sold, one of my favorites, and the 10X Rule, which has spawned the 10X Movement and your massive 10X Growth Conference. With a following of more than 15 million people across your social platforms, you become one of the most talked about CEOs on the planet. Ultimately, you believe that America is in decline and that the only person that can fix the crippling economy, border crisis, and, the, and end the current wars is Donald Trump. Grant. Welcome back to London Real. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. And some of that is a bit taken out of context, okay? Yeah. Okay. I didn't say Donald Trump was the only guy that could say <laughs> Okay, all right. I don't know who said that. That, <laughs> that wasn't me saying that. So. All right, well, we'll jump into it and yeah, clarify. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, uh, so I don't think I'm the wealthiest real estate investor in the world. Okay? I was checking that. But I would like that to be true. Okay. And it will be true at some point. I mean, our goal right now is to become the largest single uh, property owner in America and do it with... Uh, partnering with individuals, regular people, not with Wall Street. Right, and you got over 14,000 people right now? We have 12,440 units, 14,600 investors. Okay. We've distributed, we've raised 1.2 billion and distributed back 300 million okay. to that 1.2 billion. And you wanna become the biggest in the country? We will become. You will become. I will become the largest uh, real estate owner in America. Okay. I will be bigger than BlackRock? the institutions. Okay. I love this. And I will do it with regular people. This has never been done before at scale, ever. It's like democratizing real estate or real the estate investment. Institutional quality assets. These are assets that life insurance companies, a MetLife or New York Life or Lloyd's would invest in that we buy from institutions. By the way, we're going through this unbelievable correction right now. This is the biggest correction of my lifetime. Of, of real estate. It's a Robin Hood correction where, where the institutions now, like in 2008, it was regular people that lost homes yeah. <clears throat> in America. This time, it's going to be the institutions that have to turn the keys over and <clears throat> individuals can go buy these properties. Okay. I want to drill into that. How big do you have to be to be bigger than BlackRock, for example? Mm. Well, if I get to 120,000 units, okay, 10 times, 10x what I have now. Okay. I, I become the, the largest apartment owner. Okay. But I think um, that would be, that means I'm worth 40, the, the, the business would be worth $45 billion of assets. Yeah. I think I can go well beyond that. And that would make you the biggest. Oh, I, I, okay. I think I could get, because of my audience, okay, and because of what we're doing and because of the way we do it, we distribute cash flow every month to our investors. People love this, man. Um, I haven't even tapped into like the millionaires that are being ignored, the doctors, the chiropractors. I was on the phone with a guy yesterday, yesterday, over the weekend, he's worth $12 billion, heard my ad on CNBC or Sirius Radio, one of the channels, might have heard it on your show. <laughs> and uh, he says, Grant, I just want to know, he's worth $12 billion. If I gave you his name, Michael. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I probably know. Junk him. bonds. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, of course. Mike. So he says, is that ad working for you? And he's like, I have an idea, Grant. I have an idea where you could raise uh, $2 billion this year in cash. 
and have your fund, we have 23 funds now, we would go to the marketplace with those funds. We would basically become an institution. Okay, wow. With retailers basically buying in with me at that, that first level. Okay, well Milken's the real deal, I mean. You know, yeah, he's the real deal. He's a legend, sure. and he, he transformed industries, that's what he was yeah. known for in junk, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, let's talk about this, because you, I didn't mean to jump off so heavy. No, but this is important in, in because that, you, know? you were the very first mover in this concept where you went directly via your social media platforms yeah. to investors and you built this massive real estate portfolio by going like direct to consumer. This had never been done before. Yeah. You even said the guys on Wall Street are like, what the hell? How is this possible? They didn't even believe you were yeah. doing it. Yeah. But you did no, it. No, they think I'm a joke, dude. They, they think I'm a cartoon figure. Well, but when they look at four and a half billion, they can't say that's a cartoon Man, figure. it's not a lot of money to them. Like, okay. Like these guys are, you know. These are true. Tr MetLife, for instance, that nobody ever talks about. They, they have, uh, MetLife's probably got $890 billion of assets. Okay. Fidelity has $7.7 7 That's where I want to go. Okay. I want to go play in the, in, the, in, the, in the world of tease. All right. And change the and, whole model. And change the model, right? right. Because rather than, rather than me sending my $200 to Fidelity, that's how they became a... Uh, or Charles Schwab. Charles, Charles Schwab's probably, I don't know, two or three trillion dollars under management. What he did was he just made it very easy for people to invest. Say, send the money, we'll put it in a whatever ETF, which is basically just a garbage dump of stocks. And um, if people really understood the truth, like Warren Buffett's never invested in an ETF, okay? Not, not, not Bogle, the guy that created Vanguard. He never invested. He would never, ever invest in that. But he created a paper product that people could send 50 bucks to or 100 bucks to or 200 bucks to. And people think, oh, I'm invested in the stock market. But you can't get the money out for 30 years. And I believe 30 years from now, taxes will be double what they are today. So why would I want my money taxed twice when I retire? So what we did, we created that platform and say, hey, take your retirement money, put it into this real asset, not a piece of paper, this real asset that distributes cash flow now, right now, not 30 years from now, that you can live off of, improve the quality of your life, buy a car, rent your place, buy a home, whatever. It, it, it supports people in, in their payments. Okay. And people are responding to it. Obviously. You know, and the JP Morgans and the Goldmans and the, the Wall Street guys that you know, they just basically ignored retail investors. Yeah. Well, this is the problem. It's called the innovator's dilemma. I worked in Wall Street for 15 years, right? That's why I'm in London. Uh -huh. I came here to do credit derivatives uh, with all the institutions. So my clients used to be Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and on Wall Street, I traded derivatives. So I know that whole business. And funny enough, Grant, now the last three years I've gone in to crypto, what crypto shows you is how much the banking system rips out of the economy. Yeah. Between six and eight percent of global GDP is taken, stolen uh -huh. from banking institutions. And I always tell my students, and you don't even know it, right? They take it from you and you don't even know it. Right. And it's all basically a racket is Wall Street. It is a you know total that. racket. It's a total racket. There's a lot of I rackets mean, out there. There's some <laughs> simple indications, right? When you drop off money, at, let's say a bank, First of all, you, you, you go there, they're open at nine o'clock in the morning, they're closed at five o'clock. Most of the day they're closed. You can't really get anything from them, okay? You drop the money off, you can't get it on the weekends. If you're using an ATM machine at four o'clock in the morning, you know it's not good for you. Uh, you you're, they say they're gonna pay you one or 2%, but the truth is they're gonna charge you over one or 2% just to keep your money at the bank. You, you don't make any money, it is a complete racket. Right, and they don't give you your cash when you want it back. Yeah, if you want your cash, if you go in there so hard. 72 hours later and say, I want my 100 grand back, you cannot get that 100 grand. You're gonna probably wait three days to get it back. Yeah. So it is absolutely a racket, not to mention that's the first level. Then the second level is they're gonna take my 100 grand, they're gonna lend it out to 10 other guys. They're going to say that's a million dollars worth of assets on their books. I think this year we have 300 bank failures in America. Wow. Okay. The books are so out of balance right now. There's, so, there's $800 billion worth of debt coming due just in the apartment category. That debt's coming due this year and JP and Goldman, all these big names have to pay. And so banks are tied to all that. Pension funds are tied to all that, and it's going to create a big, big. It's going to create a big opportunity, but in the meantime, it's going to create a crisis for a lot of people. All right, so we're going to see big defaults, like 08, but not from the consumers, but from the institutions. Institutions, and that's going to require more printing of money. Uh, the U.S. The U.S. is like 34 trillion dollars in debt. It, I think I saw something earlier this morning where we literally need another trillion dollars 
what was the number? Was it a trillion? Yeah, another trillion That's every serious. 100 days Okay. to service debt. So every 100 days, three times a year, 34 trillion will become 37 trillion. 37 becomes 40 trillion, 40. Like, what is, like what's going to happen here? You got to keep printing money. So where do I want to be? I want to be in real assets. Right. I want, want to be a Bitcoin. Absolutely. I'd want to be gold and silver, not so much for me because it doesn't do anything. Right. Like, I, I, I don't get it. Right. You can always get more gold. There's more gold. <laughs> They've been finding gold for my whole lifetime. So, and nobody's ever traded with me. And the real estate, the people got to have a place to live. Right. Do you think the public is waking up to the fact that they need real assets? I mean, you know, for the first time in maybe years, people talk more about money printing, talk about inflation. Do you think people get it or your average Yeah, guy I think people are angry about it, but yeah. I don't think they really get it. They don't understand. I think they, 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 they're like, you know, they don't want to confront the scam. So they just keep sta saving money at the bank. Right. The best somebody's going to do is I'm saving my money. You're not saving your money. Your money's going down in value. Not to mention the depreciate every time they print. By the way, I don't mind if they print. I get excited. When they print money. I love it. Okay. Because I know I'm going to get more. Right. Because people have more money. And they're you got more it. money, bro. I'm going to get more money. Right. So print it. Uh, because a hustler doesn't mind. Like if I know how, if you know how to go get money, you actually want more money in the system. The other side of that is if you own assets, you want printing. Okay, wealthy people want the print because the print means the assets they own go up in value. Right. The people that don't That's, want the print are the lower classes and people with savings. Yeah, because you, you, your groceries are going up, your rent's going up, your electricity's going up. If you're a saver, you don't want inflation. Okay. If you're an investor, you want it. Talk to me about this upcoming crisis because 08 was hard on you. And you're yeah. always really honest yeah, about how yeah. hard it was. And the conclusion you made, I think, with Elena was, we were going to get so big where well, mm. that's never going to happen mm. to me again. And it yeah. feels like you've been doing that the last, what, 16 years? Yeah. Trying to get so big. Yeah. Have you done what you wanted to do? And, well, and, and are you ready for this next one? I am definitely ready for this. Because you're moment. wiser. Yeah, I'm wiser and I'm more courageous. And okay. I'm more confident in my, in my strategy, right? Okay. And, and I, didn't, I just didn't have that then. I didn't have complete confidence. And that, that confidence just comes from doing deals over and over, making mistakes, and recovering from the mistake. Like, making a mistake is not really where people, I, I hear people say, hey, I learn most from my mistakes. I learn nothing from success. I learn a lot from success. Like, when, I, when I'm successful, I, I learn a lot. I'm like, dang, do that shit again. Like, go, go hard on that again. Do right. that that exact thing right right again it's not a lucky it's not like wear that same underwear <laughs> like do whatever you said repeat it that activity worked right so i do learn something from success and and on the failure side i don't really learn from failure like oh wow i screwed up but i do learn because i picked myself up and the failure didn't kill me and that creates this oh wow you know it'd be like getting in a fight getting beat up if that's never happened to you you're really worried about it but once you get beat up once, you know, you ever been beat up? Yeah, yeah, as a young kid. Yeah, yeah. I've been beat up and many times. martial arts training, I got beat up a lot. Well, there you go. So, yeah. so, so, you know, it's like, okay, once I know what a hit feels like, I'm not as scared of it. Yeah. It's because I know it's not going to kill me. Okay. So you're going big now. So 2008, yeah, it was like, okay, I just got played with. And a bank failed. A new bigger bank, bigger guy came in. They started pushing me around because I owed them money. And they start shoving me. And I'm like... And I had money to pay the bills. I was never late. Uh, the loan was uh, completely, a, technically a good loan. And they just started pushing and shoving on me. And I'm like, okay, I'm never going to be in this position again. And so, and the way to beat, not be in that position is to own so many assets. And I know this is very difficult and kind of out of reach for a lot of people to listen to. Like, how are you going to get there? Well, same way I, you know, the same way, you know, I wasn't there 16 years ago, which seemed like yesterday. So acquire assets. That's what they need to do. I, you Real have assets. to acquire. Don't buy stuff. Don't buy stuff. Okay. Buy assets and, and own real buildings that you can control or a real business. The buildings are better because the business is going to die. Okay. Right. But the buildings won't. Is it true you make yourself broke now every single year or every single yeah. quarter? Yeah, I do. You take any extra cash you got and you put it into things you can't touch. Uh, yep. And then you got to start again. I'm, I, I, I'm into illiquidity. You love it because it pushes you. I love you. being illiquid because the banks tell you to be liquid. Right. 
Wall Street says be liquid. But when you're liquid, you're a target, right? So if I go to Starbucks this morning, I don't have any money in my pocket. So if we go to Starbucks, you and I go over there, guess what? I, I can't pay because I'm not liquid. Right. So I got to lean on my guy, Brian, and say, Brian, you mind picking this one up? I never have any money. So I don't want cash in the bank. I don't want money in, a, in an account over here. I don't even want 90 days of savings for the emergency account. That's okay. so well, so recommended by all the financial uh, gurus and, and consultants and whatever they call themselves. Because you'll end up spending that on something you shouldn't. Bro, look, not you're asset. literally pulling the law of attraction into you by having 90 days of okay. savings. Okay. You're literally saying, I'm gonna fail. I need an emergency. Okay, that's well said, man. It's I have to have an emergency. I have it funded. I'm ready to go. Somebody's going to steal the money from you. It's definitely going to depreciate. Uh, hopefully you never have an emergency. So then it was just a waste and it should have been invested. Quotes I always get from you is money is useless until it's being used. That's right. And you always say, would you rather have a billion dollars or a billion friends? Yeah. Both of those to me relate to this concept of cash flow that uh -huh. you've pushed. As in, is it cash? Or is it cash flow? This is the story of you, I think. Mm -hmm. And yet we're all brought up to value cash. Yeah, Even cash, in the rap videos, it's like, look at my $100 bills, look at my 100 bands, is that what they call yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When in fact that's the trash, what you want is something that spits that out every year. Yeah, well, every month. Every month. Because that's what my bills are due every month, they're not due annually. Okay. And that's so what, what I want with. is, I want that recurring thing. I want that thing. So, because most people are not disciplined with money, including myself. Like, I'm not, like, you give me a bunch of watches, I'm not, I'm gonna admire them for a couple of days and I'm gonna forget I have them. How many suits do you have? A lot. A lot. Right, but I stopped. Like, dude, I wouldn't them. go to your tailor just because I can't imagine managing all the suits. <laughs> like, which one am I gonna to wear today? It's just too complicated for me, right? <laughs> it's not that hard. Yeah, but, but. But you're saying everybody lacks discipline when it comes to money. So of just course. Put it away from yourself. So, so what I, what I don't wanna manage the watches, right? It's not that I don't like watches or I, I don't wanna to have to. Now I have to manage them. Right. And I'm worried about the watches because somebody's going to come grab one or break one or whatever. So like, mental bandwidth, you would rather have working on your business, not worrying about watches. I, 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 want a, I want a drip coming in every month. I want drips that are independent of me having to work. When my dad died, I was 10 years old. The money stopped that week. It didn't stop a month later. He didn't have, okay, we're going to give you 12 months of severance. When you die, bro, the severance is immediate. And so the income stopped. And when the income stopped, I saw my mom transform. I didn't know what I was seeing at the time because I was only 10. But there was Tara. Right. And, and, and she started, she started and, I, and I could feel her. She started scrambling. I got to sell the house, okay? We got to sell the car. We got to go buy a new house. We got to, she talked, called it uh, um, going down. What's that called? The, we got to downsizing. Uh, downsize. Okay. None of this sounded good to me. No. We were out in the country, man. We had two acres of land. You know, I'm out running, having fun time. Now we got to go into the city next to the school, the prison. And I'm like, okay, what happened here? And as I grew older, I looked back and said, oh, the income stopped. Yeah, my dad died. But the income stopped, that dependable. Now, we're all going to die. So, like, I've been planning since I was 10, how do I get income that I earn, what, how do I invest that in something so that it pays me when I can't earn? Okay. And to me, that is the most important money in, in, on, on planet Earth. Like, like, until you're wealthy and you can borrow against assets and, you know, until you're super wealthy, you don't worry about money anymore. I mean, the wealthy don't even have incomes. They just have drips. Right, right. You know, this money coming in, and that's what I live off of. So I stay, back to your point about I go broke. I go broke is, I, I'd like to go broke more often. Okay. I have a bunch of money right now, I can't get rid of it. All right. But I would love to get it to zero because until it's zero, it could be stolen. Okay, stolen in so many ways, right? Inflation. Printing, inflation, printing money steals it, anything. Uh, uh, you spend the, it on stuff you The bank fails, I right. can't get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we, nobody, everybody forgot we had the largest bank failure in the history of this planet less than 15 months ago. So was that Republic Bank? Or SBB. S well, Silicon Valley Bank almost failed. What well, failed, really? They, right. Yeah. That was the biggest bank. That was me. shocking. And then it came over here. What was the big uh, uh, group that failed over here? Oh, it was uh, that failed. Big name, dude. Was Massive. It, was it Insure? Credit Suisse? 
Oh no. yes, Credit Suisse, yeah, of yeah. course. We used to be one of my clients. Like, like, it's one of the biggest yeah. names in the world. Yeah. Here we are 15 months later, it was a, it, it, it's like nobody even knows it happened. And stock markets are all-time highs. It's crazy, dude. Yeah. All, all saying, that's paper. All that's paper, yeah. And it's- but All the, of it's driven by seven stocks. Yeah, true. Okay. So if you're owning those seven, you lost money last year. Right. While rents went up 9%. By the way, for the last 40 years, rents have out, rent increases alone have outperformed the stock market for 40 years. Without the appreciation of the property, just the rent. But most people don't do that. Right. They're like, I can't be a landlord. And so this year, you're waiting for those things to fail, and you're going to come in and scoop up yeah, I'm, we're gonna, all sorts of distressed assets. We're going to scoop. And from, from scoop traditional and players. We call so it scoop and keep. It's payback time, basically. We don't scoop and dump. We scoop and keep. <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy these guys. Okay. And I feel good about it. I have a chip on my shoulder. I have something to prove. This is a Robin Hood investment moment. Really? 1,000%. And unfortunately, most people are going to miss it because they're still looking to buy a house. Okay. And that's the worst thing. Which is so like, I'm looking for my house. I'm looking for my house. You know, I'm looking for my car. I'm looking for my car. I'm looking for my suit. Like if you're really that committed to those things, you should go buy a car dealership and get a free car. Like invest in the dealership. If you're looking, rather than buying a car, go invest in the neighborhood. Buy the neighborhood. Figure out how to put some buddies together. Anybody can do what I've done. Like it's not, you could be a young black kid, 20 years old, coming out of inner city Baltimore or the worst parts of London or whatever. If you lock in on how wealth is created, it is not created because you go get a job. And it's certainly not created because you don't work. So there's got to be some other, like, puzzle that we all need to figure out other than I'm not going to work and bitch or I'm going to work really hard and earn a bunch of money because well, they're just going to take it from you anyway. Well, we've been brainwashed, Yeah, right? We've been exactly. brainwashed that you got to buy a home yeah. and you got to save your money. And you deserve to buy a home too. Yeah. I mean, that, that's a serious brainwashing and everything, yeah. uh, everything it reinforces it, including the mainstream media, yeah. the school system, yeah. everything. That's what uh, people don't know. They're mindlessly walking through life without zooming out and saying, wait a second, this doesn't make any sense. And that's what the wealthy do best, yeah. is that they look at assets, not liabilities. Yeah. Masquerading as assets. Yeah, and they, become, they, become, they, they, they actually study the money, the money game. So that when you're saying it's a scam, and when you use words like there's a trap and people are brainwashed, and <clears throat> this is not a conspiracy, this is real. Yeah. And it's been real for thousands of years. Or at least so I, that's why I always like coming here because you're you're so woken up, <laughs> not woke. You but call me woken. woke. <laughs> Do you think you can pull this off, or will the system ultimately try to shut you down? Is it trying to shut you down, or are they not that smart or coordinated? Well, first of all, in the beginning, what they always do is ignore you. Okay, this is the most painful part of the process. It's not it's not the rejection. It's the it, it, they ignore yeah. you. They yeah. mistreat you, and that, that hurts a lot of people. You know, I know I've always been ignored. Always been you know, underestimated or, you know, misunderstood or, and, and part of that is my fault, right? The way I present, but, you know, some people just fail, like they just stop because of that, because they never could get the attention. And then other people are like, oh, I'm going to do something different here. I, now I really have a reason to get their attention. So like what the, these institutions that we're dealing with, we don't sell assets like I have enough right now, I could go to one group and say, here. But that would feed them, right? That would, that would give, that would, then they'd throw me away. So like, I don't use them for money either. I don't go to them and say, hey, can you give me, let's partnership. Because if I do that, I feed them. Okay. So what I do is I starve the beast, right? And what I do is I accumulate the things I know they want. They're basically a target for me. So they're either a target that I'm going to sell to in the future. They like big meals, as you know. Right. Big, giant meals. Right. The bigger, the better. They want to take on a huge chunk of assets, and do you'll they, have that in the future. These people think so big, Yeah. right? They're th they think in trillions. How do I take trillion-dollar bites? I think BlackRock is trying to snuff out Blackstone right now. Really? That's what I think's happening. Okay. Because they could take, a, they could consume the whole company if they could put enough pressure on them. So... Um, I was just saying, so, so I can't feed them and I can't do business with them right now. So what I do is I buy their assets. Now, I didn't know this moment was going to happen, which means the institutions were going to look up in 2024 and say, we have a problem now. We have a 2008 problem. Hmm. And it's bigger than 2008. 
Now, my biggest concern, Brian, is that they're going to, it's so big. It's coming due now. You're going to start seeing it in the paper. You'll see it in the Wall Street Journal. You'll see it in Barron's. All this debt's coming due. I think it's so big that the federal government could step in and say, hey, look, extend everything for everyone. Because this isn't Mr. Smith and his wife that have a loan due of 400 grand. Right. This is, this is uh, Goldstone, I'm making up names, Bluestone, uh, Yellow Man. Like these are, these are the biggest institutions in the world that have hundreds of billions of dollars of debt coming due right now. Right, just like they saved Silicon Valley Bank. They'll save these other ones somehow. Or... I mean, there's just not enough liquidity to buy all this. Okay. Do you need to raise because money? once, let's say a group like, um, I'm trying not to use names so yeah. I don't get in trouble with these people because I'm going to do business with them at some point. Okay. All right. Big institution. Uh, big okay. big giant institution. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the moment they mark down ten deals of their, let's say, thirty thousand deals, which they would have, I have thirty nine deals. They have thirty nine thousand. The moment they mark down 10 deals and dump them, they have to mark down the rest of their book. Right. It becomes a contagion right. that is so massive. And once one company marks down, their neighbor marks down. These guys, as you know, they're all connected. Yeah. That's why they all are in the same location in New York because they're passing books, passing assets, working deals out. Unfortunately, pitch hit funds get affected. That's the average everyday person that trusted their money at CalPERS or wherever it went to. Banks will be affected. There, we have 30, uh, what do we have, 37, 40, 4,700 banks in America. Uh, what do you have here? It's like 1,000, maybe yeah. 1,500. Yeah. Yeah. We've never had three bank failures only without it, without it swelling to hundreds. And, and so I think that that's what happens now. And, and the government could step in and just say, you know what, just add a couple years to everything. Okay, would that mess up your plans? Oh yeah, I fucked my plan. I'm okay, time. now where do you get all this capital from? Because you might need billions and billions, or tens of billions yeah, of dollars to my, scoop in from my friends, your network, my, from the people that love me on Insta, on social media, okay. and and that don't want to, they want to, they want to be involved in the real estate game, but they don't have the time, the energy, the inclination. They don't want to manage. They don't want to evict people. Okay. They don't want to go negotiate these deals. You know, and so we buy these big, massive, beautiful, unbelievable, well-located buildings from institutions. I buy the deal, and then I open it up to my audience and say, "You want in?" And they're hungry for more. Your audience. Oh yeah, they're. they're I just need to tell more people about it. Okay. And I'm raising more money right now than than we ever have. Okay, for Cardone Capital, right? Yeah, for Cardone Capital. Okay. Now the institutions can't raise money right now. It's interesting, isn't they it? They can't raise money. Uh, they can't match. They can't meet their their dis distributions. Our distributions are up, not down. They can't do redemptions, okay. And what's happened here is these these giants all play with giants. They've been ex very exclusive, okay. I'm democratizing to an audience that needs it, and they were exclusive yeah. and basically preyed on one another for the deals. It excluded guys like me. Wouldn't even talk to me. Wouldn't return my phone calls. It's just Goldman and Blackie and ba da da. These got these big giants just passing the monopoly board. You couldn't even sit at the table with them. And guess what? Now happened. We went from a three percent interest rate to a seven, and all those guys were moving their little freaking things around. And they looked up and said, "Hey, can you help me out here? I got my own problems, bro. Right. Can you help me out over here?" The calls they used to make to do, to bail each other out, those calls aren't there. But I am. Mm, this is fascinating. Now, now I get an invitation. I've had like if I want a meeting with these guys now, now I can I can sit down with them. Okay. So you just had a flashback to me. I did a small version of this three years ago with something I called London Real Ventures. Now we were looking at the crypto market, mm -hmm. which did really really well, and all of the big VC players, all because they talked to each other, they invested in the FTXs of the world and all these multi billion dollar things that crashed. Yeah. Now. I was a smaller player, I couldn't get access to that, right? And so when the market crashed, I had a bunch of my people. I got 100 of my hardcore London realers that invest alongside of me. And so when the market crashed, the institutions, they couldn't spend a dime. They were marked down 20, 30%. Yeah. They were in pain. And it turns out that our checks were the only ones in the industry. Now my base didn't get wrecked 
because they never get access to those deals. Yeah. And so we invested all through this bear market, scooping up deals here and there. Wow. Because there was no capital out there, especially in blockchain for these big players. Now that it's coming back, we're in a similar situation where we bought the lows. And it's because I had a different investor base, just right. like you, right. of these people that never got access, so they never got burned. Yeah. And now we're trying to change the game in that sense. So I yeah. see what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and this is good for people. Yes. It's now, unfortunately, <clears throat> there will be people that you know misuse the system and take take advantage of investors. And but look, hey, Wall Street's been taking advantage of investors for like for so long, man. These people, the the company Brookfield, I think it's Brookfield. I don't know if Ryan's here yet, but um, they they wrote off a half a trillion dollars off their books as losses last year. And it's a, it, it's not even reported. Like it's like it's yeah. a non-event. Yeah. And they're doing business the next day. They're like, yeah, that's half a trillion. All these groups that I've mentioned have no money invested in these deals. All this money is one hundred percent, one hundred probably one hundred and ten percent raised from everyday people that have no idea what they're invested in. You have no idea what what stocks are you invested in? What companies? You're just funding the war machine, yeah. the big pharma machine, okay? I mean, Kellogg's is talking about you should have breakfast for dinner now. You see that? No, is that oh, a way of saving that's money? That's the new thing, bro. Bro, your Cheerios should become your dinner. This is, and you gotta know that they had a call with big pharma before that, yeah, let's get them sicker quicker. That's gonna be the new program, sicker quicker, forever. So. People got to wake up to this. That's why I love your show, man, because look, you're getting sick because of what you eat, okay? Like in America, my, my new thesis on America is with 800 million arms, nobody's really worried about how many weapons that we have in America because they're just going to medicate and obesity everybody so you can't get your gun. That would be the way, that would be the way to actually calm down the most armed nation on planet Earth. Gotcha. Through Big Pharma. Right. And then Big Pharma is in cahoots with big media, which is in cahoots with big food and it, and, in, and, and big banking. Banks. And, and big, banking big banks. And the government. Just listen to me, son. Yeah. Save your money at Wells Fargo. Yeah. And it all goes round We're your and neighborhood and community bank. Right. And it, it's the hypnotism in the ads. Yeah. You can hear it in the ads. Yeah. Yeah. But people are waking up a little bit. A little and bit. Thanks to, to, I'd say, COVID. COVID. The lockdown. Some people saw through the matrix. Yeah. And now they're starting to see it everywhere. I mean, people used to trust their doctor with anything they said. Yeah. People used to trick their banker with yeah. anything they said. People yeah. used to tr tr uh, trust their senators and congressmen with anything they said. Yeah. I think people are now, wait the, a second. COVID was a godsend. Yeah. I think COVID was a, a, a way better thing for people than people are looking at. I think you're right. Because they didn't succeed and we could see it for what it was. Yeah. You could see a glitch. And now a lot of people, not everyone, are questioning everything. And now as you go to democratize all of this stuff, that's a way of cutting out these middlemen that mm -hmm. have been there for hundreds of years or since the Medicis yeah. did this in 1500s. Yeah. So I like that you're doing that. Yeah. You talked about chip on your shoulder. Yeah. You still got a chip sure, at 65? Dude. Of course, man. <laughs> and when am I going to grow up? No, probably not. Where's this chip coming from? And you always told me, you Where? said, you always said, how can I do business with you if I don't know you? Yeah. You know, and then that's all about you making enough noise to people yeah. know who you are so they can do business with you. I mean, yeah, I think the chip is that because it's, it's, it's being ignored forever, man. Like, okay. like, you know, it's either like, okay, I don't know you, I've never heard of you. We, we came to London to do these big uh, meetings with a bunch of insurance companies. I'm on the phone with a guy today. We just flew in. He's like, man. These people know you. Well, these are insurance companies. They shouldn't know me. Is he really going to be at the meeting? That's what they're asking this guy. These are old 60, 70 year old guys in insurance. Okay. Like these are boring people, right? Okay. I, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm thinking. I haven't met them yet, but I'm watching this now. <laughs> well, now, the meeting, I'll do the meeting and then they'll see it. But, but they know me like th th there's no way that doesn't help me. Right. Right. Yeah. Now, Unfortunately, 16 years ago, nobody knew me. Okay. How do these guys know you? How's a 70 year old? I have no clue. His kid. C level, his kid, yeah. I don't know. I'll find out in the meetings. Yeah. But that helps you. Yeah. I think it helps me. It does help you. There's no way I go into a meeting a little known, even misunderstood, is better than not known. Definitely. Yeah. 
And again, I took a, I took a, a bunch of pages from your book. Yeah. And I learned a lot about this. And now when I go into my deals, they've seen me running for mayor. They've seen me doing this broadcast. And so, it makes everything 20 times easier. Yeah. Oh, blah, blah, I'm chatting away. Oh, by the way, I, re I really like your content. Or yeah. I saw you do this yeah. or whatever. And then all of a sudden. Even, even, even if it was negative, the first impression was negative. Right. It tends to benefit me. Right, okay. Because then they're like, oh, dude, like you're a nicer guy than I thought you were. <laughs> it's all part of your grand plan. I, not day. really. <laughs> not really, dude. It was just a push and shove. Okay. It was just, okay, they ignored me. Okay, I need to try something else or go talk to somebody that does know me. And then, then the chip, you know, like the people that know me, I, was, uh, I had a guy text me two days ago and he's like, he sent me a picture of my plane sitting at, my, at the airport where we park our plane. And he pulled up next to me. So, and he's got a, I think he's got a 550. And he took a picture of the plane. He's like, man, I am so proud of your success. Well, he remembers me, bro, when I was 30 years old. I was hustling him for a $200 product. And he was, he's the son of a car dealer. They were extremely successful. And he'd been watching me for 30 years, flying commercial on Southwest Airlines, sitting in the back, working car dealers, working at 10 o'clock at night, calling on these guys, being mistreated by these people, being ignored, being rejected. And then he pulls up to my plane the other day and says, wow, dude. I mean, the beautiful thing about, for me, like the most exciting fans, if you will, that I have are the ones that saw the whole journey. Right, right. You know, because him and his family ignored me. They ignored me, they rejected me, they turned me down. It's cool now, but. They should have back then. Uh, no, they should have listened to me. I could help them. I could have helped them even then. Right. Like I had some good, good stuff to, to share with people. Right. So, but um, everything was about a transaction then for me. Like I was hustling transaction. I even used the word hustle. It was a hustle. I'm trying to get money, man. I was literally like it was clear. It was on my face. I'm a. I was a predator. Like like I was in the hunt trying to prepare for my, to take care of my family or my future family that I didn't even have yet. Right. And so it was a hustle for me and a grind. And they could see that, they could feel that coming off of me. It was very, very transactional. But fast forward 30 years, I'm transformed into a different person to not just being a hustler, but finally an investor and a proven businessman. Right. And that gives me a lot of satisfaction, that's, okay? You like that more than anything. Dude, that, that's better than the money. <laughs> he saw what I did. Right. But okay. nobody sees what you do. Very few people know the whole story of Grant Cardone. Yeah, that's true. And now you're bigger than- Because they come in late. They come in late. Look, I didn't even know the story. And this is true story here. Six years ago, you came on my show. Uh -huh. It was like June 18, 2018. Uh -huh. The night before, I look at my team. I say, who the, well, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah, we yeah. got this guy with the stands on top of his plane. Yeah, na, yeah, na, na, yeah, na, yeah, na. yeah. And you roll up and you sit in that chair. I, I kid you not, Grant. 14 minutes in, you're talking about 25 years old, drug addicted, getting yeah. beat up by my dealers, all this lowest of the low. And I was yeah. like, this guy is as real as they come. Yeah. This guy's paid the dues. This guy's been yeah. through the journey. Thank you. Thank you. Brian. And I was just like, man, I was like, man, I literally had never flipped that quick on somebody. Wow. And I thought, wow, um, this guy's the real deal. He's London real through and through. And then a year later, you came back. We talked again. We talked to Elena. And ever since then, I'm just like, you guys are, are out there repping all the time. Yeah. And yet, because you try to get your image out there, most people's first impression is this guy's brash. Because if it wasn't, you wouldn't be doing enough. Because yeah. that means you get more exposure. Yeah. And so along with your now success, you get haters. Yeah. Yeah, right. we get a lot of haters, man. <laughs> now you once said so to let me- So let me just go back on that. Because in the beginning, you don't know how to get attention. Right. Like there's no format here. Everybody's gonna have a different way to get it. Okay. Right. You could do a course, you could educate. Whatever you're gonna do, you gotta do it consistently, okay? And then when you're doing something consistently and you're looking up and saying, I got one viewer. I have one person watching me. Okay, now I have two, and I'm one of them. Like, like, like it's not gonna, like, you're not gonna explode. Right. If you end up with a viral video from the get-go, you're probably gonna burn out. You're gonna probably burn and crash here in 90 days. Right. I never looked for the viral. I'm like, I gotta keep dropping content. Now, when you're dropping that content and you're watching what worked or didn't work, that didn't work, that didn't work, that, then you start becoming like anxious. And that's what happened to me. I became anxious. Okay, what, what do I need to do? Like, what do I need to do to get their attention? How do I get somebody to stop? Hey, stop right now, you know? Like we started trying other stuff. 
the cars and the planes and all that. I don't, I hate all that. I actually hate it. But my team says it does well. You hate recording it. You hate doing it. It just feels like, look at my shit. Like, like it, that's not really who I am, okay? I, I'm not that guy, really. I believe okay? you. Okay, I do want to be seen. Yeah. I do want attention. But it's not, I don't want attention for my car that I own, you know? You want attention for your accomplishments. Yeah, 100%. That's okay. my love language. But you know that the attention comes from flouting flout, flout the bling. That's uh, what even controversy, attention. right? you know? Right. Uh, even arguing with people, like like some of this stuff is just creates, uh, 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 it, it creates polarities. And okay, I want to be on this side or that side. Right. But at least they'll remember what side they're on. Yeah. Maybe it's not my side, but they'll remember my, my name now. That's why I said sometimes walking into a meeting and they think I'm brash and arrogant or show off. And then I walk in and I'm like, wow, man. I remember the first time I met Donald Trump. You know, I, I was a fan of his. But I'm not a fanboy, you know. Um, but when I met him, I became actually, like, really liked him. Because I didn't know how, how, how much he actually cared about other people. I didn't know that until I met him. And he was interested in me. You, you're never going to see that on TV. Yeah. He's, doing, he's reading off a teleprompter, dude, doing a speech to 38,000 people. And the same thing for me, the same thing for anybody watching right now. You're, either, you're in the beginning, nobody's, you're invisible, okay? Then maybe they see you, but they don't really give you what you deserve. They throw you in a batch with a, a bunch of other people that, that have called on them, vendors, whatever. So you're just kind of the same as everybody else. And so when you punch through, they're going to either like, oh, I really like what you do. Great, now you got to duplicate that. you got to do that a bunch of times. Or... They're not going to respond to you, and you got to figure out how do I get these people to remember me. And so that's all I was trying to do with the social media uh, 16 years ago. You I, wouldn't do it any different. Because every time you get that attention, that's like money in the bank. That's cash flow in the bank, even better. Would I, would I do it any different? Yeah, I would, I would definitely do. My whole career would be different. Really? There's so many things I would do different. But now. social media, would you do all that stuff different? Because it worked. Well, I don't know that I'd even do it. Okay. You might not do it. Might not even but do it. Then you wouldn't have the people. They wouldn't know who you are. You wouldn't do yeah, the business. Yeah, well, because I would probably just do the Wall Street thing. Oh, really? Take the big shortcut. Oh, okay. I tried that for a while. It's not that fulfilling, though. Probably wouldn't. Probably, I'm probably too spiritually awake to You'd do be that. Depressed. I got. Yeah. I got really depressed in that lifestyle. Yeah. Really depressed, and I'm never depressed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it looks good. Yeah. It's good money. It was quick money yeah. back then, yeah. but uh, you know, there's no purpose to it. There's yeah. no greater humanity to it. So, yeah. So. You get the haters, and now you got even more. Yeah. Is that just a consequence of you getting bigger, or is it also the fact that the the career of being a hater has gotten bigger? Because it has. People know, yeah, know they, that's can, a good they point. can make it's, a six-figure income by just making that, videos that's about it. That's interesting. I've, not, I've never heard that. Right? That, that, that's an interesting thing. Hater has become a, a, a place of employment. It has now. Yeah, you're right. And it probably makes them a lot more than they would at some basic starting yeah, job. Yeah, now, now that's interesting. That's interesting. So, um, yeah. You once told me, criticism is a sign of success. I want more. And yeah, I used to repeat yeah. that to myself every day, especially when I was running for mayor last uh -huh. time. And that's a Cardonism, and that is you can't get bigger without more criticism. And that's yeah. At least you're being seen though, right? Yeah. So now you're going from invisible yeah. to like, I don't like what you said. I don't like what you did. I don't agree with that. Yes. You're wrong. Yes. All that's good actually. All that is, is, is a indication of some admiration. Right. Yeah. You used to say that hate and love, they're, they're, just, they're very, very they just similar. get garbled in they're transmission. Just, they're just, go exactly. Slightly garbled. Right? Slightly, slightly the garbled. The hater really loves you somehow. He loves something about he you. He admires he something. You. He, right, yeah. He's sending me attention. Right. I might not like the attention he's giving me. Right. And then there's a place where you go too far, and it's not like hate or criticism anymore. Now it's slander. Okay. okay. We're going to talk about that? Yeah, sure. So, <laughs> but, but, but in the beginning, this other thing that you're talking about, this hate's become a commerce. Right. You know, when you really study those guys that do the clickbait videos, okay, the hate videos, there was a guy here in town that did one of me and Robert Kiyosaki. Okay. Uh, he, 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 he's interviewing Robert, and he's and he does the clickbait thing. Robert Kiyosaki uh, slams Grant Cardone. It never even happened. It's not even in the video. And I, and I hit the guy and said, dude, bro, 
I, I would expect more from you. And he's like, oh, it's my team did that. Whatever. I would expect more from your team. It, it, it's like so, so just n n tasteless. Bec and he's like, well, you know, it gets views. I'm like, bro, it doesn't convert. It gets ad dollars, but it does not convert to a product. Right, to anything. And this, Nobody, is, this is an important message. Very important. Right. So if you guys want to do clickbait videos and make a couple hundred grand a year on hate, understand all you're getting paid is AdSense, pennies from the giant, mega giants on this planet. So yeah, we will pay you to put anything online. You're a whore, man. I don't care that you're hating on me, by the way, it works for me, okay? Any attention is better than no attention. Any attention, up until a point, okay? Any attention is better than no attention because you're talking my name. Right. You're using my name and it's costing me nothing to do it. You're trying to slander me maybe, or you're trying to push me down, or, but, but really what you're trying to do is a clickbait. Now, I think what's gonna happen in the future, and I'm trying to be part of this right now, is, and I might be getting jumping ahead too quick, but, but these, this hater industry, okay, new laws need to be put in that say, okay, if you're gonna say I'm a fraud, you need to include in there proof of fraud to use it in the title. Because now you're being compensated for your title, okay, which that has not been in slander rules before. You, now you're using a clickbait, a title, fraud. So-and-so said Grant Cardone is a fraud. You should have to provide proof that so-and-so is right about that fraud. Right. Otherwise it would become liable and slander. Yeah, I think that needs to happen. Just want to finish on this hater industry real quick because yeah. you, you said it really well. Because a lot of kids are out there and maybe they're broke or they don't want to get a job and they look at a video on YouTube and think, I can do that too. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about this because this is important. Because when COVID happened and I became super famous, I had haters pondering everywhere. I couldn't believe it, Grant. I had tried my whole career to get people to notice London Real, mm -hmm. right? And try to get the BBC to feature us and all this stuff. Of course, the time they feature us is when we're you know, talking that lockdown's wrong, God forbid. Talking that masks are wrong, God forbid. Or right, then right. We, get, we blow up with our uh, COVID controversy interviews that were, uh, by the way, in the end, all true. Um, and then uh, they everyone attacked me. And that's when these guys, these YouTubers, made these videos about me. And I couldn't believe it. I was like, Grant, this guy must have spent three days on a video all about me. Crazy. I was like, it's crazy. And there wasn't one that was like five and six and seven. I was like, this is amazing. Like, I, I never couldn't get anyone to pay attention before. Right, right, right. Now they are. And then they get bigger and bigger. And the point you make is good, is that you're gonna make money on the AdSense. But so that's it. That's it. And You're not gonna convert them to exactly. the product you wanna sell, right. to the industry you're in. Right. What's the future why, The of reason this? why is because you're selling distrust. Right. So if you sell distrust and then say, hey, come buy my product, they're gonna be like, uh, yeah, bro, uh, you just sold me on fraud. Exactly. So if you're pitching fraud, okay, understand you're left with the stain of fraud. Yeah, it's true. And like people stop me in the streets, and I'm sure it happens to you, Grant. We have these most amazing conversations. Like, and we're always talking about improving ourselves. What's the future? What's the cool thing coming up? Oh, yeah. that, that, that one guest dropped the crazy science. Man, it yeah, blew yeah. my mind. Yeah, yeah. We have these amazing positive conversations that Those I can, can do convert. all day. Yeah. I can't imagine when one of the hater YouTubers meets one of his fellow hater guys and they meet and they're like, hey, how are you? Oh, yeah, I saw that video. Yeah, F that guy. Yeah, yeah F that yeah. guy, F that guy, F that guy. And then they're right, sitting right. there like, oh my God, you guys just went to the lowest frequency possible. What does your future look like? Totally. It's, it's, it's really fucked. To totally. And it's like, totally. okay, you can make that choice just like you can drink all day and do drugs and smoke cigarettes and, and read gossip magazines. But man, that karma is a motherfucker. Dude. And you're gonna end up down this road where nothing happens. I meet London Real fans now that want to invest alongside yeah, me, yeah, right? Yeah. They want to do documentary films with me. They want to introduce me to the biggest deals on the planet. It's because I started that relationship with high frequency vibes, yeah, not yeah. this kind of yeah. weird fraud thing. Yeah. So just a note to anybody who wants to go down there, it ends, it ends bad. Yeah, and all you're doing is, who, who wants to listen? Who, who is going to stop and watch a hate video? People that are very low toned people that are very low, any, any of the criticism, who's buying the gossip mags, okay? Who's buying all the, the garbage headlines about how bad the world is? Not the doers and the producers. Right. 
It is the victims and spectators of society. So if that's your audience, you're never going to get any money from because number one, they don't have any money. Number two, if they had money, they wouldn't spend it with you because they doubt themselves. How could I actually have confidence about my abilities if I'm reading lies every day about who, what movie star slept with, us, what a person like, I'm not, that's none of my business. I don't care. It's got nothing to do with me and it's probably a lot. Right, right. So, but there's a point where it gets too far and that's where it becomes liable and slander and online you can do that all day long and there's no ramifications. And so you, a few months ago, I think. Well, there have, haven't been because it's expensive. Yeah. Right. To, to, uh, yeah. Now, Vice litigate. Magazine wrote this terrible article about me in 2020. Again, I would have loved it if Vice would have wrote an article yeah, yeah, about yeah. me in the past. Yeah. And Vice used to be like me. They used to be the rebels out there finding the truth. And they wrote this crappy piece about me where they went and found three of my 3,000 buyers and maybe they didn't like the yeah, product. Okay. Yeah. And the whole thing, right? And the title. And I tried to Zoom, Grant, and it was like 100,000 pounds later, we're getting nowhere. Uh -huh. And I'm like, all right, that's going nowhere. And so I you know, saw your video about trying to like figure out what's going on with these people. What are you going to do? And who's coming after you? Because you got crazy people coming after you. Yeah. You know, you got, you know, I don't know, you got some crazy people. Uh, talk to me about what you're doing with those guys. What? You, know, you got T-Mobile CEO, John Legary. Yeah, yeah. You got all these people yeah. talking crazy about you. Yeah. What are you going to do about it? Well, I'm, what I'm doing with him, I can't tell you exactly behind the scenes of the lawsuit itself, but... But there's a point where it's too far. This is, is a situation saying. where we're in a, we're in a live room. We're in an audience. Uh, we were on Clubhouse. Right. Or let's say it's on uh, X. I like X. And we're having a conversation. You and I are having a debate. And I, you say, Grant, you're, you're wrong. And I say, you're a bitch. And you're acting like a bitch. And, and, and uh, you're, and he says, oh, you're misinforming people. Okay, good. All that's, all that's opinions. There's nothing. We're just debating, dude. You're a dumbass. Okay, I'm a dumbass. Dad, or whatever. But whatever, that's fine. Like, I don't care how much of that you throw at me. But the moment you walk into the neighborhood of intentionally trying to damage my brand, my family, my business, my ability to produce revenue, to destroy trust with an audience... Me being wrong doesn't mean you have the right. By the way, if, if I have destroyed an audience or hurt somebody and you have proof of it, that is not, what's the word, slander. Right. Okay, it's the truth. So if I've ever stolen any money from people and you say, Grant, you stole money from Brian Rose. Okay, good. Do you have proof of that? No, I don't. Well, then that's slander because I didn't steal any money from Brian or anyone, by the way. So what happened in this situation was there's a person that went online and basically suggested that I was a fraud, a con artist, a bullshitter, and a pedophile. No. And had pictures of my, knowing my kids would see this. I didn't know about that, man. Had pictures of me with young boys, okay? And I'm like, bro, like, it was fun debating with you. This is way too far. That's way too far. Okay. And... And the fraud's too far. Yeah, I the agree. The con artist is too far. I You're agree. You're going to go to prison. I agree. All this is too far. Because it, 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 it makes people that would, let's say they wanted to go to the growth conference. Oh, no, I don't think I'm going to go to that now. That costs me money. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to invest with Grant. Mm, maybe I shouldn't. I saw this thing online. And that's the problem with online today, okay? Like, one, you're online, okay? Which, I'm, hey, I'm willing to do it. Like, I say dumb shit all the time. But I don't slander people. Ever. And if I do, by the way, if I go after somebody, trust me, I have some proof that I can support and say, hey, look, I have the receipts that this guy stole money before. Uh, you know, Jordan Belfort is a perfect example. I called him a criminal. He is. He's fucking, he's a criminal. I don't know how he feels about that, but I know for a fact that he's a criminal because he went to jail. Yeah. And he's a snitch. How do I know that? I can say that about him because he snitched on his guys. It's a public record. That is not slander. That is the truth. So what are you doing against these people? You suing them all? You trying no, to set a precedent? No, no, I'm not suing them all. You trying to set a precedent so this doesn't happen again? Yeah, but what, what we're, what we're going to do is we are definitely going to set a precedent. Okay, this is a, it's a $100 million lawsuit. It could, it could become something bigger than that, actually. Um, hint, hint. Good. Um, 
Uh, and it will definitely send a message to everyone. My hope is, uh, number one, I will win this lawsuit. I will be, I will be, pay, I, I will be remunerated, remunerated, okay, because of this. A lot of people have been asking me, you, you don't, you're just trying to get attention. Oh no, I, this, this is not an attention thing for me. This is, this is, I've been harmed, okay. And I hope to, the bigger, even bigger thing is, I hope to actually change the laws in America where this will be used as, no, 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 you cannot clickbait. You cannot headline because there's a lot of other people that picked this up and now have been playing games with it that also could be um, in some situations. Okay, so not just John, perhaps. Let's, other just, start where, let's just start with him and see okay. where this goes. Okay, but there's you other know. people playing the same game. And the bigger you get, the more it comes. Yeah, and that's fine. I, I'm, I'm up for it. But you know? it's time to push back a little bit. But, but there a comes a point where, you know, unfortunately, most people do not have the wherewithal to actually defend themselves. And there's a big conversation and argument. There was a suggestion actually by other people, okay, or even the other side. You will never do this. You will never do this. This was actually publicly said. You will never do this because it's going to put all this attention on what I'm saying about you. And I'm like, bro, look at these hands, okay? Like, these hands are clean, bro. Bring it on. I'll show every book. I'll open every book I have. Every review I've had, every comment. I don't care. I'll show you everything I had. I hope the world sees everything. And you'll know, everybody will see the exact, who Grant Cardone really is. And you get that chip on your shoulder, which helps. Because a lot of people oh, wouldn't doing do it. They wouldn't do this. Because, because they got dirty hands. Or I don't have any skeletons. Or because they see collateral damage being too much. But you just got pissed off enough where you're like, this just isn't right. And I'm putting a line in the sand and I'm going after it. I just know I don't have anything to hide, man. Okay. I, I, I'm not a fraud. You know, I'm not a pedophile. I'm not a, I'm not a, I, am I a bullshitter? I mean, I, I don't think so. I, I, I tell people, hey, invest in this deal. Well, how's that bullshit? It's a, a real piece of real estate. So I, that's an opinion, you know, I'm not a fraud. I have never taken anybody's money, okay? We do 160,000, we've never taken anybody's money and not given them a return. We, we, we do, for the last 10 years, I do 160,000 commercial transactions every year with clients where they gave me money. We do another 16 million freebies every year. Nobody has to buy anything from me ever. We have good reviews and we have bad reviews. I have 97% of them are good. 3% of the people, we just get their money back. <laughs> you don't, you're not happy? Boom, here's your money back, no problem. So I'm happy, I mean, I'm a businessman, okay? Amazon's got bad reviews. Like when I look at a piece of real estate and it's got bad reviews, I don't not buy it because it's got bad reviews. We raise the rent, people are gonna be upset about it. Like, that, that happens. So a restaurant has bad reviews doesn't mean they don't have good food. Right. It means you weren't happy. Yeah. Okay. Anything more to add on the haters? Uh, no, man. Haters are good for you. You know, you're not going to want it. Nobody gets prepared for it. There's no course. or you Don't even go get a class on it, okay? Most people can't handle the hate. Dude, that's why you cannot not. handle it, man. Very few people can handle it. You know, right? that's why so many people say, I don't want attention. Because you can't handle all the stuff that comes with it. But don't, you don't want to do that. I would say this. You do want the haters. It's part of the game. Yeah. If you want to do something big, if you want to really help out, like all the, anybody that's done anything big was ridiculed. Yeah. Steve Jobs was ridiculed. Uh, he's not a good family man. He's a monster. He's a terrible guy. Bro, like pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, I recently sat down with a guy named Spencer Lodge. He has a podcast in Dubai. I know he knows you really yeah, well. Yeah, I know Spence. And he had this impression of me, a bit like some people have a Grant Cardone impression. Like, uh -huh. who the fuck is this guy? Brian, what do you think he is? I rolled up to his place in the Palm. I'm chilling with him. And we had this deep conversation for like 90 minutes. And like every uh -huh. 10 minutes, he's like, whoa, whoa. And he was like, I don't understand why you do these things, Brian. You do this and you run for mayor and you put these controversial videos and everybody hates you. He's like, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just you know, stick to your show and not ruin your business. And I was like, bro, I was like, first of all, it's, this is my show. Yeah. Like, this is my ride I'm on. Right, right, Everybody exactly. else can watch. Yeah. And I, I want to do these things. I felt passionate about this. I felt angry about this. Yeah. I wanted to change the city. I want to do this. And that's why I did those things. I didn't do it because I wanted to be quiet and protect the thing. And at the end of it, he was just like, man, like, I, now I understand you. Yeah. I didn't get you before because that media bias is out there for everybody. Yeah.
you know. Did did you get your YouTube channel back? Yeah, no. Six months ago today, okay. yeah, we were deplatformed from YouTube. So, so where, where do you, where do you, what do you use now? Well, we use everything else, uh -huh. and we may or may not use some YouTube channels at this point. Um, it is a fucking travesty of justice. Mm. They pulled things down for quote unquote medical misinformation, which doesn't make any yeah. sense to me. And they shut down, you know, twelve years of work, uh, six hundred million views, you know, two point four million subscribers, fourteen thousand views, my entire life, and ninety nine point nine percent of it is content that makes people's lives better. Period. Yeah, and they yeah. shut it down. Now we've been trying to get it back. Our new movie that talks about it is a great centerpiece because it puts the reflection back on YouTube. Uh -huh. But like, you know, YouTube and Google are these monopolies yeah. that are yeah. stronger than governments. Yeah. If anybody looked at the Twitter files, I can't wait for the YouTube files because they're worse. Uh -huh. And that means the government was probably complicit in breaking my First Amendment right to express myself through these technology companies. I'm hoping we get a certain president in place and he just investigates all of this yeah, yeah, yeah. and replatforms me because this is wrong, yeah. breaks constitutional rights. It's technically a felony what they've yeah. done. Well, so yeah, I'm yeah I hope you back. get it back, dude, because it's a great channel. Thank you, man. Great value. And let people think whatever they want as long as you don't cross the line and start saying things that aren't true. Yeah, I know. You Go know? figure. The hater videos are up there. But yeah. me having a calm conversation where people question some of the things we were doing in this world, those yeah. things have to be pulled down. It's all complicit. And, and unfortunately, to most of the audience listening, you guys check out on this. You're listening to Brian right now, and you're like, that's not real to me. Yeah, because it hadn't happened to you. Yeah. Okay, but when it happens to you, man, it's real. I was doing, I did a Robert Malone interview. Okay, yeah, I love him. And Robert said, look, uh, I said, Robert, uh, you know, anything I don't want to bring up here, he's like, you probably don't want to mention Ivermectin. Because if you do, they're going to shut your channel down. I said, that's some bullshit. Ain't nobody shut my channel down. Like, I was the very cavalier, right? And so, of course, what does Grant do? Tell me about Ivermectin. Bang, Instagram immediately shuts the sound down. Like, that was not even real to me. Wow. I was shocked, man. I was like, oh, my God. You know, I took all this stuff for granted until COVID. Yeah, for me, it was April 6, 2020, second largest YouTube live stream in the world, 65,000 people watching at the same time, and 30 minutes later, YouTube deleted and banned the video. I have been broadcasting for nine years, Grant. Wow. I'd had almost 1,000 interviews that wow. had never happened to me before, and like wow. you said, I thought the weirdos got censored, right? That yeah, happens yeah, to the weird yeah, guys yeah, over there. Yeah. It doesn't happen to me. I'm here talking the truth. I'm having weird, a conversation. Bro. You're kind of weird, bro. Right? I'm, a weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that weird. Yeah, yeah. Uncensored, unscripted yeah. conversations. Yeah, I, yeah. I was literally talking to a 72-year-old dude um, about what was going on in the world, and they got to censor that. And so wow. then I realized, uh-oh, because we were right so on the edge. So they didn't censor some of them. They didn't take out some of them. They took out, they just well, wiped out the whole channel. The, on, in 2020, during the midst of COVID, uh -huh. they took down that video. I got and it. then anything related, anything going against the World Health Organization, uh -huh. that reputable institution that's been right about everything, it's yeah, yeah. not controlled by a few elite people like yeah. Gates and stuff yeah, yeah, or yeah, China, yeah. Yeah, yeah. right? So if you said something against WHO policy, they would take it down. Uh -huh. And again, who said that? It's all complicit. Big pharma, big media, big everything. And then we were on the front lines, and our movie's everything that happened behind the scenes, and three years later, they took our channel down completely. Wow. But we're still fighting. Bring it. Yeah. You know, we're still fighting. Yeah, yeah. So, but Good, that's... Well, hey, you live for something, bro. Yeah. At you least, know? when I meet people, they know that they know that we stand up for what we believe in. Yeah. Period. And I'll take that, and that one final piece with the haters. When I meet someone in the streets, they know what I stand for, and they know I can walk the walk. And my question is, if you're going to make hater videos, when someone meets you in the street, like, what are they what Dude, are they they're never going to say a word to you, bro. <laughs> they're never going to be like, hey, Brian, not going to happen. They might come over and give you a hug. Man, I really like your work. Okay? Most of them are anonymous. Okay? A couple of them show up, you know, show up and show their face. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it's a predator business. You're, n you're never going to have any financial freedom ever. If you've got any hustle in you at all, there's a dead end on this industry. Because um, you can't monetize it. Yeah. But the fact that you're standing up and doing your thing and you got cut off, you're just going to go to another place. Have you gone to Rumble? Yeah. 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 We've gone Rumble and everywhere yeah. else. And then X is making yeah. huge, huge, huge yeah. strands there. X has been great. Tell me about America. You recently went on CNBC recently yeah. and said, I was looking into Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, and New York City yeah, yeah. to invest. And now I'm pulling out of all of those states. Yeah. You're looking at the country. The border crisis. You can't do. You cannot go. You cannot do business in America 
and assume that all of it is America. What does that mean? Like, I can't go do an event in New York City because I, I don't know what's going to happen at the event. Like, are they going to overtax me or are they going to let me do my event or somebody going to come? I don't know what they're doing. I it's never like, thought this would happen. I don't like want to go parallel to parallel America. You're saying it's, it's yeah, it, it's it, not it, America. It, there, there, there's places where I can do business and know the results of me doing business there, and there's places where if I go do business, I'm worried about them robbing me. Whether it's I, the crime in the neighborhood or the hotel's got to charge me 22 percent more because their taxes because they got in, uh, illegals in the streets that they can't fund. I mean, this is it's, it's insane, bro. Uh, Biden's coming out with a thing right now, $25,000 credit. I thought it was going to be for Americans to buy a house. They're going to give it to illegal immigrants Serious? to buy a house. I don't know how they buy a house. They don't have a job. I can't pay them money because they're illegal immigrants. I can't hire them and pay them. So, I mean, basically, we sanctioned, America sanctioned three weeks ago, a former president that is running for president and sanctioned him like they would Vladimir Putin. Can't do business in New York for three years, and we want to seize your property. We will force you to sell your property or confiscate your property in order to pay the bail that we've imposed on you. It's a sanction, bro. And at the same time, while we're sanctioning a former president or any U.S. citizen, for that fact, we are now giving sanctuary to people that don't even, didn't even come to the country illegally. They are illegals, okay? They broke the law to come into the country. End of story. My, my, my grandparents were immigrants. They came in here. All of them checked in legally except one of them. And he, he lived in the dark shadows of the economy for 75 years. Hmm. Everybody else got, got, came in, indoctrinated into the U.S. economy, into the, the way of doing business here, and became citizens and contributors and and built this country. So you're not against immigration, no. you're against illegal immigration. Dude, we should increase immigration. Yeah, right. We should increase immigration in this country. I agree. All these kids that come from schools, uh, uh, come from China and India and go to our schools, when they're checking out, man, when they're going, you, we should give them immediate access to America. Here, free access. Push, push them to the front. Give them a freaking bonus, okay? Give them some money to go with it. Give them a place to live. We don't want you going back to India. We don't want you going back to China. They, those people should be rewarded. The engineers, the, the coders, the, you yeah. know, like, like I'm, we should increase it. We should have five or 10 million people, new immigrants every year, not one million. And we could, because those people do want to come in, but if you try to get a green card, good luck yeah. with that. It's going to take forever and there's a limited number. Yeah. Yet meanwhile, if you roll through the border and you're not from Mexico by the numbers I've seen, Answer this question. Trump was down at the border last week, and he said, frankly, he said, for, for the love of God, he said, I can't even understand why they're doing it. He's like, I don't buy the fact that these people are all going to all vote Democrat one day. I don't He's either. like, I can't I don't, even. I don't buy that either. It makes no rhyme or reason, which is now true of pretty much the left, the mayor of this city. Every decision he makes, it literally seems to sabotage the city. Yeah. How, so what is happening? Are they trying to sabotage the country? Hey, I, 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 I don't know. I, I know this. I mean, the, the illegal, if you're in the rental business, you don't mind illegal immigrants. They're renters. Right. Their whole life, they're going to be renters. Dude, if you, don't have a, if you don't have a right to live in that country, you're not going to own a piece of property. I, that's why I'm saying they're going to give them a $25,000 credit to buy a house. Well, how's he qualified to buy it? Who's going to give him the mortgage? So, I, I, I don't mind the activity. Now, I wor worry about the 2% of 7 million people. That's 100, what is 2% of 7 million? What, 14,000? Uh, yeah, yeah 140,000, right? Is that right? Seven, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. 140,000. 2% yeah. statistically will be vicious, terrible criminals. Right. Interested only in making conditions worse for everybody, regardless of where they live. They could be back in Afghanistan or Iraq, wherever they came from. Their intent in society, about 2% of the population, is basically what's called a suppressive. They want to, people to do worse. They actually acti uh, interested, intentionally interested in worsening other people's lives. So of that 7 million, that's 140,000 people coming to America every year. Right. We could avoid that by just saying, look, 
if you already have money, like in other countries, you can buy a piece of property and bang, get get a meet immediate visa. Yeah. Okay. I can get a dual citizenship by saying, "Hey, I'm gonna buy a piece of property." Those are investors, man. I think that's good. So I don't know what's happening in the border borough. I don't know why they're doing this, but it's insane. And what about America? In general? How, how did it work up here, by the way, when you guys let everybody just take over London? Take over London? Yeah. What do you mean? Have they taken it over, dude? What? Like what? who? I mean. Didn't didn't you guys open your borders up and just let let people just people like, are it like it looks to me like the audience is changing in London. When I come to London now, as opposed to ten or fifteen or twenty years ago, the 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 the, the face of London has changed. Is it? I don't look. There's people coming across the water that are trying to get in illegally uh -huh. because I guess this is a destination. Um, I haven't seen it show up in like a massive way that okay. I can tell. Okay. Um, Paris. Although, what about Paris? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, these are all infiltrated. Yeah, yeah for yeah, sure. Yeah. But also, like, if you look at America, I mean, the UK is starting to have America problems. You yeah. know, We're starting to see the homeless problems, starting yeah, to see yeah. all these other problems. Yeah. You know, America right now. I look at some of these cities. It's just it's like shocking. Dude. What's going on here? Like, you know, and Tucker Carlson recently went to Moscow and he walked around and he's like, "Wow, I don't see homeless people." Oh, Where's I the went graffiti? To the shopping market. Where's the graffiti? And everyone's like, "Oh, that, that's just superficial stuff." And he's like, "No, that's that's life." Yeah. And if you can't live your life in a country, then what's the success of that country? Yeah. And yet we now just expect that in our cities. And now the theft is starting in this city like it happens, I guess, in L.A. and New York where people brazenly steal things in the open. We're about five years lagging behind yeah. probably. You, you guys are five cities. years behind us, huh? And then I spent two Everything's months... Everything's on lockdown. You go into these stores now. Everything You, you can't get anything. You have to ask somebody, you know, I, oh, thought really? we were going to, I thought we were going to AI. Where you walk in, boom! Every you know, just get whatever you want. Now they're having to add more people to unlock the really? cabinet to bring it to the cashier. It's getting more cumbersome. I just spent two months in Dubai. That is a massive contrast to this. Yeah. There, it is the safest place you've ever seen. Clean. No one will steal anything. It's super clean. There's also not all this political hate going on. Right. And these people are huge. They're they're huge KPIs. Like they want feedback. Want the feedback. They're building. Yeah. They're investing. They want to make this the friendly place. I got my golden visa. Mm. The guy gave it to me, ten year golden visa, because of who I am. Wow. I didn't have to put any money down. I need He's, a golden visa. Man. Yeah, it'll get you that. You like yeah. that? It's good yeah. marketing too. Yeah, golden yeah. visa, right? So I got it because I'm Brian Rosa London Real, and they yeah, said yeah. we want you here. Yeah, yeah. Because you're a net yeah. asset to this place. Think they give me some land? Give me, give me a, give me a place. Give oh. me a little patch of the desert. I'll make a few calls. Man. A camel? They would love you there. I know, dude. They do love me. They what do you get? Every time I go to the desert, the people love me there. They would love you. I there. get along with them so well. It's an amazing place to be, and you're around people that are always thinking forward. Yeah. I'm telling you the difference yeah. in Dubai, Grant. You walk around London and you look at the people on the streets, about a third of them are phoning it in. They're phoning their life in. Uh -huh. They don't want to be here. They don't nah, they want to contribute. And then nah, nah, everybody in Dubai is there for yeah. a reason. Yeah. Now you can say the cabbie's not paid enough, or the guy building the building needs better benefits. Guess what? He left Sri Lanka he to left, be there. Yeah, he left Ethiopian, Pakistan to right? be there. He, and he's trying to build something better for right. himself. He sent it all back to us. Yeah. And so the energy there is one of optimism. I mean, there is a slave, there oh. is a slavery uh, 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 component there. There is a p uh, probably a component of people that aren't being paid very well. But, right, but they're trying to improve that all the time. They're being paid a hundred times more than they were being paid at the place they left. Yeah, and they can always leave. You know, it's yeah. a choice. Yeah. And so being around that vibe and seeing this city of the future, it's yeah. really inspiring. When yeah. you come back to a place like this, where you're like, oh, democracy? Is it really? They're like, oh, you don't have freedom of speech in Dubai. I'm like, oh, like I do on YouTube? Yeah. Like yeah. I do here yeah. in this country yeah. when the government tells me I can't say this? What can't you say in Dubai? Well, you know, maybe you're criticizing. I mean, I know this is not a good look there. You, you don't want to put your foot. Oh, is that a bad thing? Yeah. Oh, bro. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Actually, you know, I screened my film, We uh -huh. Will Not Be Silenced in Dubai, and there were some people from the government there, and I thought, okay, how's this going to go over? Because I'm campaigning for freedom of speech. Yeah. And they said, actually, Brian, we believe in freedom of speech. We don't believe in hate. Uh -huh. You're not allowed to hate people. Uh -huh. They'll throw you out of the country for hate. Wow. Right after October 7th happened in, uh, in Israel, they had a conference, and they had people coming from Palestine, people coming from Israel, and they said, I don't know if we should come. And they said, you can come because we don't tolerate any nonsense in this country. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be any hate. There's not going to be any ramifications because we don't play that. So, look, they found a way to create this, this vision. They don't get it all right. But man, when you look back at our Western superior look how democracies, fast they did it though. like we need to be embarrassed with yeah. what we're doing here because yeah. it's, uh, and London's breaking. That's why I'm running to be the next mayor of London. Mm -hmm. Transportation system broken, wow. healthcare system broken, kids getting stabs on the streets, business terrible, and he's hack. I call it the green new scam. They hijack some environmental concerns. I love the environment, but don't hijack it and then mm -hmm. tax me and mm -hmm. use it for your own agenda. So they're doing that here, and you know, just like they're doing it where you are. You know? Uh oh, they're coming in.
Oh, I thought they were coming in with my coffee. Oh yeah, maybe they are. Yeah. And so, uh, so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm pushing back here. Because yeah, we should, problem. dude. You should. Yeah. You know, it'd be a great fight. I don't know how it turns out, but. And you're seeing the same thing in America. Coffee break. Let's get going yeah. here. Oh, thank right. you, brother. Thank you, thank you. You'll tell me what No, no. So, secrets. yeah, what, what, what's happening over there is, like, the schools are clearly failing. Okay? Roads are terrible. Um, airports are nasty. That's why I try to avoid them. <laughs> you know? Best thing I ever did was buy a plane. So you could avoid the airports. Like, I thought it was just a thing about eight years ago when I did it. Like, okay, it's me. I deserve it. I fly a lot, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, now I'm looking up saying, man, all of this was smart for us to do. So the fact that I now have to, I can't go to Chicago and do business, or I can't go to New York, or I can't go to San Francisco, because I don't understand what the regulations or the laws are or what they're going to change. Like, Illinois is trying to raise taxes, right? New Jersey's trying to raise taxes. New York's going to raise and every time they race, people leave. So you're having all this push. America, you know, when I was looking at the UK, how small it is. Yeah. I saw it on a map this morning. I'm like, damn, how did that much power come out of that one little spot? It's dense. Unbelievable. And then I look at how big we are there, right? And so I'm like, that the negativity in some of these places, some of this these terrible decisions by politicians in New York, San Francisco, the way they're letting their, their, these beautiful cities deteriorate and be overwhelmed by other problems. The money, the, the successful people are going to migrate down to the places where like, okay, I'll go to Miami. And that's what's happening. I'll go to Dallas. I'll go to Houston. And, and that's an investor that's paying attention to this. Phoenix, Arizona, huge beneficiary of what's happened in California. Right. And so anybody that's looking at that. Now, if America continues to deteriorate, there's going to be a whole bunch of top of the food chain people say, okay, where else can I move in the world? And then you're moving to Dubai at that point. Maybe. Maybe. Or Saudi or, I don't know. But there's choices. 20 years ago. I don't know how you get your money out. Yeah, but 20 years ago, if I had told you Grant Cardone's going to say I might have to move to Saudi, you would have been like, there's no way. And now, look at the state of the world. It's crazy, dude. You know Donald Trump. You had him yep. at your 10X Growth Conference, yep. which was a huge thing a couple years ago. Yep. Um, he's walked running. in as a surprise. What's that? Yeah. He walked in as, as a surprise. It was amazing. Uh -huh. It was a surprise. You got to know him behind the scenes. He's now running. He is sweeping, you know, sweeping these primaries and votes. I had a guy on a couple months ago named Jim Rickards, really smart economist, and he said, Brian, it's, it's Trump in a landslide from what he's hearing. Well, We got Trump against Biden. The election's coming up really soon. Like, this is critical. Um, you know Trump. Like, what, what, what is going to happen? Yeah. What needs to happen? Can he turn the country around, even if he gets elected? And will he get elected? Yeah, well, I hope he does. Okay. You know. Um, I, I said, you know, a year ago, I said, if they put him in prison, he's still going to win. It might, and he'll win even bigger. This stuff is starting to backfire. Like COVID, COVID... COVID, is, we're starting to wake up because of COVID. Maybe we needed to import this virus in order for people to wake up and see the connection between the media, big pharma, our politicians, the congressmen that are making $179,000 a year end up with $140 million. You cannot even do the math on that. There's, it's an impossible uh, exercise to figure out how Nancy Pelosi, who's never been paid more than $190,000, is worth $140 million. It's, a, it's impossible. Yeah. So the corruption in the system, the fact that, you know, in America today, like, we're the free country. Man, it's a freaking great marketing program. You know, we're the freest, we're the greatest, we're the wealthiest. It, this is the best country in the world. Most people are saying that have never been any place else. Is America great? Yeah, it's an awesome place. But there's no doubt in my mind, I would, be, I would have done what I did in probably almost any other place, including the Gaza Strip, okay? This is a headline. I would have made it even if I'd have been born in the Gaza Strip because I would have left. I would have figured out how to get out of Dodge, just like I got out of my little refinery town and to go to Opportunity. So I'm not saying there's people out there that are like can't ever get out. They can, but can America get out of a situation? I don't know. Can Donald Trump do it by himself? I doubt it, but I know Donald Trump is waking people up. And do I love everything about Donald Trump? No. Nobody loves everything about Donald Trump any more than you'd say you love everything about me, right? But, but so what? 
I wouldn't wear your suit. You would, okay? Doesn't mean I can't like you. But I tell you what, Donald Trump, dude, is a he's a he's a warrior, man. That guy. I think I have a pretty good work ethic. He makes me look like a chump. Explain that. His energy, dude, his energy, like his ability to work and to be interested and to be present and to go to the next meeting and not complain. I do it all too. I do all that that he does, but I complain the whole goddamn time. <laughs> God damn it, I don't want to do nothing. But I, now, he might do that behind the scenes, but I didn't see it. So the guy's got tremendous energy. This this idea that he's too old. Look, that 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 guy is not too old. I'd take him over a forty five year old. If you gave me 10 45 year olds and Donald Trump, I'd be like, let me take the Donald. Because the guy's a maniac. I see him at these rallies. He'll talk for an hour, two hours. Dude. He's riffing the whole time. He's having a good time. Yeah. Meanwhile, He's getting seriously prosecuted Just, in state after state after state. He's getting bad news every second of the day. Yeah, and he's laughing it off at these things. Like, I don't know many people that can handle that. I mean, again, he worked his whole life. I had life. Don Jr. on my show. Okay. And I said, Don, what happens when you, Eric, Ivanka, and his wife all say you're doing it wrong? Like, do you guys ever have the conversation with him about dad, like, you don't need to say it that way. And Donald Jr. looks at me. I felt like an idiot because he looked at me. He's like, no, Grant, we've never had that conversation. Like tongue in cheek, right? right? No, Grant, of course, we've never had that conversation. And I thought it was an original question. He's like, you know how many times I've been asked that? I'm like, yeah, okay, dude, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so, so but what was the, the answer? They try? I, I said, what's the answer? He's like, of course, bro, of course. But like, he is who he is. And you're not going... And, you, and, and by the way, do you know how hard it is to be who you are? Like I told my wife this, and, and I really understand that because I understand that there's no way his family's not saying you should have said it like this because my family tells me I should have said it different. And I tell my wife, I'm like, yeah, but baby, you weren't there when I was saying it, by the way. You weren't in it when I was saying it. And I would say it again. Okay, because they just under, misunderstood it doesn't mean what I'm saying is not true. Did, could I say it a better way? Maybe, but I, like, so what? What is the point? So, so when you're in the moment, right, and you're trying to help people, man, you're going to say it wrong. And what, what's, what's wrong with that? As long as your heart's good and the intention's good. Now, back to Donald, is his intention just good? I, I guarantee you that Donald Trump is thinking about himself while he's thinking about America, and why wouldn't he? When you come to me in a business deal, and we're doing a deal, trust me, I am thinking about me. I am negotiating for me. I am negotiating to make sure this deal works for me. If you call that greedy, selfish, self-absorbed, I am interested in me, okay? And that deal better be good for you. Because if it's not good for you, then it's not good for me. And, and so, and I'm going to be just, you know, some people don't like literal. They do not like the literal truth. They cannot handle it, right? That to call somebody a criminal. Well, if it's true, it's true. If it's slander, that's a different thing. And so <clears throat> with Trump, I think he's just very literate. Uh, uh, not, not literate. Yeah, he's very literal. He's literal. Like he, he just, boom, here it is. Because right. when I interviewed him, there was all this stuff with the Secret Service. I mean, it was a pain in the ass. I would never even have him speak at a gig again because it was such a pain in the ass with security. Him, not, not nothing. I said, Donald, what, you know, Mr. Trump, what do you, what do you want? You know, you want to go over anything? What do you mean? Well, why would we go over anything? <laughs> I've done Usher. I've done all these stores, Travolta, like all these stores. Right? Most of them, they want to know. Not most of them, but many of them right. well, want to know, what are we talking about? First question, second question. Third. Trump's like, let's just go up there and talk, huh? I said, yeah, can we stay out of the politics? Let's just do business. That's great. Let's go do it. He didn't ask how long. He didn't ask what questions. He didn't tell me, this is off. Don't ask about this. Don't touch that. And I'm t I'm, you've done enough interviews. Yeah. Sometimes they'll come with like a list of things. Do not talk about this period of time in my career. I'm like, I wasn't even thinking about that, bro. But Trump was just like open book. Let's as go. real as it gets. Yeah. Right. 
You said it's hard to be yourself. Yeah, dude, it is. It is very, it's lonely. There's no wife, no kids, nobody, mom, dad, nobody can be you. Like anybody thinks that this, I, you pick that up, but, but nobody, you know, it's fucking tough, dude. Just to be complete, 100% genuine. You are because, always by yourself. Right. Okay, understand, if you're a leader, you're always by yourself. No matter how many people, I have a thousand people that work in our companies today. The when, first time I came here, I think we had, I don't know, 60 people, it's a thousand. I am more alone today than I was then. Explain that, Grant. Dude, it's, 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 it's not like, you know, this thing is not cracked up to what, like everybody thinks, oh, you're the leader and you got it. Like Elon, I look at Elon, I said, boy, that dude must be fucking lonely. Yeah. Yeah. That shit, that shit's gotta be lonely. Because here's a guy that's a genius, right? He's a genius at so many different things. And he is a marketing beast. Not only is he an engineering genius, which I don't know that that's even true because I don't know enough about engineering yeah. to label him a genius because I, I don't know enough about engineering. Nothing to do with him. You understand? Yeah, but we hear he is. Yeah. 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 Okay. So uh, I would assume he is. And, and that, but on the marketing <clears throat> and <clears throat> on the, the, the willingness to, to actually monetize things also as a is <clears throat> a person that's interested in funding. You know, when I saw him selling the gun, the, the fire gun, whatever that was called. Flamethrower, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, that's Grant Cardone. I would do that shit. To monetize some activity, other activity. It's a gimmick, right? It's a gimmick thing. I would do that. Um, I would do, hey, we're going to be automated here in the next little bit. But he hadn't delivered on that yet. But, but, but he, his postulate, he just needs to bring it into the present time. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> My point is, dude, it's so lonely because when you're doing this stuff, right, you have, have Jared over here saying, well, that's not the exact number. Okay, well, I got you. We're going to make it the exact number because I'm going to get that number. Okay, I'm going to own 45,000 units. Uh, I'm going to own... A uh, hundred billion dollars worth of real estate, but you don't right now. That's fine. I'm gonna own it, and so. But they don't know that, dude. You understand what I'm saying? Right. You know. So, so it's it's, you know. Oh, you said this wrong. It's gonna offend somebody. Fuck them. Like I'm already. I already know I offended them, dude. I I, I knew it. I thought about offending them, and I said I shouldn't say this. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> I need to do this. I want to offend this this group of people right now. I'm interested in offending them. And I don't want everybody doing business with me, okay? Uh, I want a family month, okay? To counter the gay month, the, 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 the gay parade month, whatever, whatever that month is. You got a month? I want a fucking month. I want a month, a straight month, okay? I want success month. Like if I was president, I'd put those months in, the first day I was in president. Okay, we're gonna have a straight month, we're gonna have family month, and we're gonna, we're gonna celebrate this shit, and we're gonna celebrate success month. We're gonna celebrate the top 10% of all the producers on the planet. That's gonna be the month where we celebrate fucking greatness. And the rest of you fucking 90 percenters, if y'all want a month, go get one. And, and, and so I know when I do that, I just offended three groups of people. But I'm fine with it. Now my wife, she, oh man. She's not that, she's, she doesn't have the skin I have. And that's why it's lonely at the top. And then, because and then, you know and then, you have to be you. Yeah, dude. Because because I know she's, I know she's, partially not in agreement with what I did. Sherry's not in agreement with what I did. Jared's concerned about how it's going to affect the business, right? Uh, Ryan's worried because Ryan's in Cardone Capital and he's trying to get these calls with the institutions and he wants me to kiss their ass and kiss the ring and take a knee. And I'm like, no, I'm more like you. I'm like, fuck it, you know. He, uh, Jared doesn't want me to do anything on COVID because the, co the, the YouTube channel could get compromised and, and we get a tremendous amount of traffic from there. So I'm having to, like, I'm not really the king that I thought I would be at this moment. Right. But I'm you, still tied to all this stuff, but by myself because, because, because I can't not do it. You know, I have to be true to me. I cannot, I would rather disappoint my wife, Elena, 
Sherry, Jared, Ryan, and fail, then look in the mirror and say, you're a, you're a pussy dude. Right. I just can't do it. And ultimately you and know. And that's the loneliness. Right. And ultimately you know where you're going. The rest of them don't really know. <clears throat> you know. I'm the only one that can know. Exactly. Nobody knows. The, no, nobody knows what I can do. I remember when I was 20, uh, 24 years old, 25 years old, this guy, Bobby Brown, I'll never forget it. He gave me the quota. He gave me my quota for the month. I said, what? How would you know what I can do? I'm the only one that knows it. And nobody's given me a quota since then. 40 years ago. Fuck you and your quota. I give me quotas. And my quota is always unattainable today. Your personal quota to My yourself. personal quota. So, right. so, then, 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 so that's why I'm always pushing. Right. Right? Like people don't understand why I push so hard. I got a quota. My quota. Right. And then the more I tell the world about it, then, then now you know about my quota. Right. Okay. I don't know what I said to you in 2008 when I was here. Or 2000. What? When 18. was I? 18. 18. When I was here, I don't know what I told you I would do, but I'll bet you I exceeded it. Yeah, you did. You probably said, hey, what are you going to do next? And I said, blah, 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 blah. And if we go back and look at the tape, if there is a tape, there's no tape anymore, but if we went back and looked at the, the, the recording, I probably said I was going to own, I don't know, 6,000 units. You guys need to do, figure that out in production. What did I say last time? It was like a billion, a billion would have been a big thing back yeah, then. Yeah, now, now we're at 4.5 billion. Yeah. I'll do a billion every quarter this year. Okay, there you go. What, what so, I said I would get to. Right. So you put it out there, and then that holds you accountable to that. But ultimately, you're the guy. It that's strings pushing. me to all these other agreements, right? I get strung out. So I'm strung out right now. I feel like Gulliver. Okay, and it's never going to end. That's the way it and is. Then I, Lonely at the top. Yeah, it is. and a struggle. So you know, and, you and then have, and then and then you know, along the way, you're like, because I imagine I, I don't know why I'm picking it up right now. Your audience right now is saying, but are you happy? Maybe. I don't know. Somebody asked me recently, they said, do you want your kids to be happy? I said, no, I want my kids to be productive. I don't, I, don't, I don't wish for my kids to be happy. I wish for them to be healthy. And I wish for them to be productive. Because if they're healthy and productive, then they're going to probably have some semblance of happiness. Hmm. You know? And so I just want to be productive. It's hard to strive for happiness. Dude, it's, it's weird. Hard. It's a I, weird thing. I, Maybe the wrong thing. You know, Jordan Peterson says just to strive for purpose or strive for this, but strive for happiness is a funny one. Uh, what is it? Uh, yeah. Like, how, how, do, how, how do I, and once I get it, it, it how yeah. long does it stay? Exactly. It's fleeting. Yeah. You, 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 seem, you, seem, you seem like you enjoy what you're doing most of the time, Grant. Yeah, yeah. And I see a lot of It doesn't of matter stuff. if I do or don't, though, just to be yeah. clear with no, everybody. I understand. It I doesn't matter that. whether I like what I'm doing or not. I didn't like flying over here last night. I mean, it was cool. Like... I can't complain about it. I'm sleeping on a 650, you know? Right. But you know what I told Ryan on, on, in the plane? I said, you know, now I, I, I only fly, I don't know, maybe 30 or 40 times a year, and I have my own plane. When I didn't have my own plane, I was flying 30 times a month. <laughs> now I have my own plane, I don't use it. So it's a weird, you know, I don't know, dude. Like, I'm, I'm still learning. Like, I, I want everybody, anybody that's watching this, like, I don't know. I say this all the time. I think this is true, but I'm not sure, completely sure, but I think it is. Then now, like I think I'm gonna get to, to whatever, $100 billion worth of real estate. I'm not sure of that completely. So I'm living with this not knowing. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know for sure, but I have to convince everybody around me, I can do this, I know I can do this, we can do this, this can happen, this is how it can happen, right? But the whole time I'm going to sleep with, I don't know if this is true for sure. This is what I imagine Trump goes through. Yeah. He's got four people around him saying, you said it wrong. His wife, the kids. And he's like, okay, but I know this is right. I, I, I imagine it's extreme. I, I don't know how he does it. Or anyone. He's not the only one. Elon, I mentioned. Jesus, man, look at Jesus. Yeah. He was rolling around with people. Let's go over here now. You know, so, so th th there's been a lot of people, and I'm not comparing myself to either one of those people. I'm just saying, like, it is very, very lonely um, when you become an individual. And I think it's a worthy goal to become an individual. And true to yourself. Yeah. An individual. 
not part of a mass. I am part of a mass. I am, I'm, I'm not trying to individuate, but an individual, individuals change the world. It is not groups that change the world. It is individuals, okay? Leaders are very, very important, okay? Like Tom Brady is very, very important to the team. The team's very important, but the team is not more important than the individual. I'm sorry. And this will be, people will take this out of context and say, oh, he thinks he's more important than the team. Yeah, actually I do. Because the team, without me, the team changes. Without Tom, the team changes. Without Babe Ruth. Babe Ruth played on, uh, he was with the Boston Red Sox. I think he was there five years, three World Series. The, the Boston Red Sox traded him to the New York Yankees. He goes to New York, he wins four out of six seasons. As, and they had never won one. So you can't tell me the individual doesn't make a difference because they do. Right. And, and, and it's lonely because you're an individual. And the wife, eight kids, all the friends in the world, you still have this private little universe that you're living in. At least I do, maybe not everybody, but I would imagine Elon would be like, yeah, bro, it's lonely. And that's the way it is. Or Barry Sternlich that runs Starwood. It has all his little private problems. Right, that's leadership at the end of the day, good leadership. Yeah. Everybody's gotta struggle with that. You're 65 now. Yeah. How much longer are you gonna do this? Oh, dude. 20 years, as long as years, I can roll, bro. As long as the knees work, the hips work, you know, as long as I have a reason to get up and, and, and make a difference. Um, You're never going to stop. No, I, I, you know, the thing that drives me the most is like educating other people. Well, when I discovered, I just, hey, I just found this out, man. I love sharing that with people. I don't need anything back for it. Like 80% of the people that see any material are never going to give me a penny for that material for the but 20 percent will the 20 percent last year like i'm a transparent person the 20 percent of the i don't know not, probably t probably two percent of the the we had 16 million followers probably 160 million people see some piece of information about about an eighth of a billion people a year see my some piece of information i did a tiny 160,000 out of that one eighth of a billion, okay? Unfortunately, we're not in every language yet. We will be with AI, but w w one tiny little piece monetized those 160 million people. Tiny piece, okay? Most, most everybody, 98% 90, of the people got the information for free. It's probably more like 99.5%. Yeah. It's probably less than half of 1%. Probably, probably a quarter of 1% that actually transacted with me. Tiny number. But that number was $155 million last year. My partner did another $110 million. 10X Health System did, I don't know, I think it did $70 million Wow. Since third, third for a year. It could do $150 million this year. Unbelievable. That's crazy. Cardone Capital did another um, $14 million, raised $300 million. Like, like th th that little tiny percentage, okay, my failure rate is off the rails, but you still gotta monetize. That's why I was talking about the haters. The haters are never gonna even get this. Right. You're gonna get, you're gonna get one, 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 one tenths of one thousandths of one millionths or something from Google. Google's the winner. Yeah. The haters are just feeding the beast. You know, you're, you're feeding the, act the machine that you should hate on is that machine because you're you're a slave to that master so when do i get done dude as long as i can keep entertaining if i could get to a billion people a year entertaining a billion people getting somebody to laugh about something or getting somebody to say what am i doing saving money at the bank Fucking stupid and the way i tell people sometimes they hear it you know and i don't i don't say it the way robert kiyosaki says it you know like i'm not into the crisis thing like you got to have all your money in gold no, you just need to get your money out of the bank. Now, now you need, next thing you need to do is figure out where you want to invest it. So when do I stop, bro? As long as somebody will listen to me, man, and I can help somebody, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to keep doing it. Talk to me about 10X Health. I mean, that blew up. And then you got Dana White into that and it blew up with him. And yeah. that's crazy numbers for a business you just started a few years ago yeah. that had no obvious probability to succeed. 
and I know you changed your health up, and yeah. you know you got Dana doing his cold plunges and his saunas, yeah. and he and Gary Bruck is now blowing up on the back of it. Yeah, um, how's that been? Well, 10x Health is you know, <clears throat> the, Gary's not the supplement. You know, Gary Gary's a spokesman, and it br brings attention to a solution. And then the solution's got to pick it up. But that business, basically three years ago, was not a. It was a, not really a business. It was a service. IV business, uh, mostly mostly for VIPs and people that were wealthy that could spend a lot of money, ten, twelve thousand dollars on IVs and stuff. And I said, look, I, I want to change this. I want to I want to handle masses of people. I do not want this to be for the elite handful. I can pay for this, but me paying for it doesn't mean my niece can pay for it. I need we need to make this affordable and easy for people to get an alternative to going to CVS and Walgreens and getting sick again. Or going to the hospital. Now, I, I'll go to the hospital. You know, I'm, I'm fine. Me and Dana had this conversation. I get in a, I get in a wreck, dude. Uh, I broke my shoulder last February in two places. But I went straight to the, boom, hit it, fix it. You know, I was on medication. Like, they, they had to give me morphine. Like, it was terrible. But I don't want to stay in that condition. Uh, three people wanted to do surgery on it. I don't want to do surgery. I want to fix my shoulder. Came up with a program to fix my shoulder. And both supplements, uh, exercise, like what, whatever the support is, right? Well, whatever it is you need. People are like, oh, you're, you know, you got to sell tests or HGH or uh, these supplements. I'm like, yeah, but none of, none of it works without work. Like you can put all the medication you want in your shoulder, dude. Somebody, this one didn't work. Okay, I was doing pull-ups three months after I broke this in two places. So um, nobody can talk me out of that. If it doesn't work for you, I don't, whatever. Maybe you didn't work, okay? I know people that get supplements and don't take them. I know people that get trainers and don't use them. I know people that join clubs and don't go to them. Like, wh who's the scam here, you or it? So um, 10X Health is blown up, dude. We scaled this thing. Um, we got a lot of attention. Uh, look what Dana did. That scares me, by the way. Why? Because I, I don't, I don't want to be dependent upon one person's success. Okay. It scares you that that was- Terrifies that, me. That there's that much tension. That, that, that but, much attention on Dana. Okay, well, in case something happens to him? Well, well, yeah, what if something happens to Dana? I don't know. That's the first thing I thought. Okay. Everybody's like, look at Dana, look at Dana, look at Dana. Dude, I love Dana. Dana's awesome. I was texting with him three days ago. I needed some help in Las Vegas. But I'm like, what if he gets fat? What if he doesn't stick with it? And then it's, oh, it didn't work. It was a trend, da, 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 whatever. Now, the, the, the cold plunge and the, the red light therapy bed and the oxygen, all that stuff is real, okay? Now, but, but again, you still got to take care of yourself. Yeah. You got to do the work. There's no replacement for the work. Now, when we tell people that and we can scale it with my, my voice, and then we've run into another number of celebrities that have got, gotten on board with it, then, then the thing, you know, blows up. We, we'll, we'll end up selling that company at some point. It's impressive to yeah. watch it, man. Super impressive. Yeah. You mentioned your kids earlier. Tell me about Sabrina, your superstar. She's 14. Yeah. She actually bounced into our last show when we were on Zoom yeah. and said hi. Yeah. But like, she's really blowing up as a brand. Yeah. You know? And she told me to tell you hello too because oh, awesome. she remembers uh, meeting you there. And That's cool, man. She's so. like, he's quite a character. <laughs> you know? Tell her hi back. We're watching her videos I will. and stuff. But what's, uh, that, what's that like actually to watch, you know, your firstborn become this thing, you know? Yeah. Well, dude, look. Uh-oh, that's a hater alarm. They're coming for us, man. <laughs> just be a second. Bring me that other coffee, Ryan. <laughs> so, yeah, tell me about Sabrina. So, well, they're both phenomenal. Okay? Yeah, I can't, yeah, Scarlett I, can't, I don't want to exclude one of them, right? right. Um, but, you know, look, man, there's nothing. Like, everything that we've talked about right now, it all disappears the moment you mention my kids. Like, like if I could have two more kids, I would. It's, a, it's a, a, yeah, nothing, nothing. There's nothing I'm better at than being a father. Really? Nothing. Wow. Public speaker, writer, real estate guy. Like I think I'm great at real estate. I am a, I am a better father than I am a husband by a thousand times. Really? And, and like always make time for them. I never, ever, ever, never like won't take their call. They called right now, I'd take the call. If I was with Donald Trump, I would take the call. 
No. No, there's nobody more important to me than those kids. And I remember I used to I used to hear this like, oh, f- kids, uh, family's the most important thing. I don't agree with that, by the way. I'm the most important thing. And I'm the most important thing because if I'm not in good shape, if I'm not present, if I'm not available, if I can't be there, then I can't. Like, how can I even help them, right? So, um, you know, hopefully, and I cross my fingers on this as much as I'm not into superstition, is like they continue to be good, right? It continues to work out. But like Sabrina, man, Sabrina's a star, dude, you know? And then Scarlett's a different kind of star. Uh, she's very creative and probably going to be an, a- an actress. Um, she's already gotten some gigs. Uh, Sabrina's a, and again, you, you look, we don't impose what, what, they, what they should do or, you know. Sabrina could run the business, though. She's very much a product manager. She's like, get the product. On others, even more so than on herself. She'll have to develop that as well. But I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm rambling about my kids right now, you know, just because I'm in love with them and I think they're phenomenal. And I remember you told me when they were born, you made a conscious effort to like completely adjust your schedule. So in the mornings. Yeah, thanks for remembering that. Yeah, man. you would spend time with her and even take her on a walk when they, you know, she was like what six I months did, old or a month old. She, dude, she wasn't even probably two weeks three weeks, every morning, I'd let Elena sleep in and I'd grab her and take her to the store. Every single day of the week. Not not a day. I don't think I missed it. I, I missed five days in a year. Right. Every morning, we'd go to the store, same store, really nice grocery store, and we'd go in there, go, I don't need groceries every day. People are like, you don't shop for your own groceries. Bro, I went and did my own groceries every day, okay? Hey, look at this is an orange. This is an avocado. This is like we'd smell them, touch them. Like she, and I assumed even when she was six weeks old that, or three weeks old, or three months old, or three years old, we assumed Elaine and I always assumed they understood everything we were saying, everything they heard. So I've been talking to her about real estate and investing and speaking and confidence, dude, the whole time. Wow. So that we we have an unbelievable bond, me and her. We'll we'll be friends forever. You know, and so um, how'd you do that? Huh? Was that just natural? Did you make a decision? I don't know, man. I don't know, but it's freaking. It's solid. Huh? It is. I think because my dad didn't spend time with me. You know, he was at work. He, he had five kids, so he's out pounding. He was trying to get his for us and for him. But you're trying to get yours, but you also understand. Yeah, well, you gotta my, put the time in. Yeah, that's why I created my life the way I have. Okay. I created, I built it so that I could spend the time with the kids. We homeschool the kids. Wow. Not because... That's no joke. Huh? That's no joke. Too. No, that's a, a real commitment. Yeah. We didn't homeschool them because it was good for them, though, but because it was good for me. I'm like, I want to come home at 2 o'clock and have my kids there. I don't want to wait until 4.30. And I don't want them with those, those fucking nutcase kids. Your kids. I don't want them <laughs> with your kids. Okay, I don't want to, because maybe your kids are fine, but it's the next set of kids that are problematic. And so I didn't want them around other people's children. So, they'll, oh, well, how are your kids going to get socialized? Okay, look up Sabrina Cardone online or Scarlett Cardone on time and tell me they're not socialized in, in a nice way. Because I didn't really want them socialized this way. So we wanted them out of the prison system, I mean the school system. You know, we wanted them out of what I think is the most dangerous place a kid can be today. Right, because it brainwashes them. Totally. They get bullied, they get introduced to, to homosexuality, to drugs, to transgender, to ideas that I would never ever introduce a 14 or 15 year old kid to. Like, let them, let them become adults. Like, there's some things kids don't need to know about. There's an age where I don't need to know about that kind of stuff yet. So. If you guys think it's like a 9 or 10 or 12-year-old kid should be introduced to sex by other people, if you believe that they should learn about that that early, how important would it be to teach them about money when they're 10 years old? So that's all we did. We just filled their time up with other things they can learn about. And, yeah, they're going to miss the football team. They're not going to be part of the softball crew. They're not going to be part of the rowing team. And you know what? They're not going to have those pictures. They're not going to have those memories. They're going to miss all of that. So you can't have it all. Right. But the kids, man, 
I mean, it's everything, dude. And I just want them to be proud of me and have stuff going on and and get them involved in it. They're both working on their speeches right now for the 10X Growth Conference. That's awesome. I give them a title. What do you think about this title? Sabrina's got hers. I have a plan. That's from that video she did about how she's going to make a million dollars and she got trashed. That's her first big hate video. We'll get, we'll get you the link so you can insert it. And uh, she's called me up, pop up, man, pop up. I'm getting, I'm, I know what it feels like to be you now. They're hating on me. I said, well, how's that? How, how do you like it? She's like, I, I kind of like it, but I'm kind of not liking it. And I said, well, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? She's like, I don't know what to say. What should I say? I said, well, you need an answer. And she's like, I said, look, when you handle hate, you have to have a response. What should I say about it? You don't have, you don't have an explanation ever with a hater. You just have a response. One short response. And it shouldn't be antagonistic. It shouldn't be angry. It shouldn't discount them. She's like, well, what should it be? I said, well, I know what I would say if I were you. But you need to come up with your own. She's like, what's yours? I said, I would just say, at least I have a plan. And smile. And she's like, that's my speech for the growth conference. At least I have a plan. So that's what she tells people. Because she, she's 14 and she's like, I'm going to be a millionaire by the time I'm 20 years old. This is how I'm going to do it. And people start adding there. Yeah, because your daddy's rich. You're going to work for your dad. Yeah, he's rich. That's the shortcut right there. Your daddy's rich. But just because I'm rich doesn't mean she's going to be rich. Just so everybody understands. I'm not giving her my money. Right. But if she has a plan, she can get her own. And that's, that's her response now. I got a plan. That's super cool. Yeah. I like it. How's Elena? I Good. see 10X Women's and yep. she's, she's pushing. I know she came here last time. She sat down. We talked about her book, which I know, you know, you guys were going back and forth. You're like, when you're finishing that book, it came yeah, out. Yeah. It's a great book. But it seems like she really went all in on 10X. Yeah, her, her, her goal is, is to build a massive audience of women, empowering women, to, to not disconnect from being women, lean into being a woman, support men, support the family unit. We need women, man. I know. I don't, I don't need a man. I told, I, I told somebody the other day, they said, how do you and Elena work together? Dude, I need a wife at home. I don't need a boss at home. I don't need a, I know all you guys want, all the women want to be bosses now. Okay. Well, I don't need a boss. I don't want a boss. I want a wife. I want a partner. I want somebody in my bed. Okay. I want, uh, I want somebody to actually cook me breakfast. I actually like being taken care of. Not a maid, not a cook. I would rather Elena make the meal. It tastes better to me than a chef. I like a grilled cheese uh, sandwich at 10 o'clock at night. Is she serving me? No, no. I'm serving her. I serve my family. Okay. She makes me breakfast. I am the servant in the relationship. I don't know where we got confused here. And Elena wants to really encourage women to be like, hey guys, we're not serving them, they're serving us. If you guys, if anybody out there, any family out there has somebody like me providing for the family, guys, I am the servant. Like I'm not the master, I am the servant. I am the one every day taking the risk, handling the anxiety, like trying to manage everything, you know, fending off the bullshit taking on the shit, like, like the craziness, trying to balance it all and just trying to be right 95% of the time so that I can feed my family, take care of them, provide a good example, provide a vehicle. But I'm the servant. She made me a damn grilled cheese sandwich, you know? And so I don't know where we got confused in our, the last 40 or 50 years. You know, my mom took care of the family, man. My dad didn't. Yeah. My dad went to work and brought income. My mom was the pillar of that family, not my dad, okay? He was the, he's the one with the briefcase that went out every day and came home every day. My mom was the one that held that shit together. And without my mom, I would not, like, like she, was the, she was holding this vessel called the family and making sure there was stability and functionality and the operations and like th this was, and this is missing in our culture. We've convinced women that they need to be like a man. Yeah, exactly. And then it you need to earn your own down. money, right? And then it all breaks down. Like, what, what does that even mean? You need what? to earn your own money. Like, like you can't even live off of your own money. You know? And why would you want to? Oh, because I got to be independent. Oh, good luck on that. 
You live with 8 billion people, man. Being independent is different than being an individual. Because if I don't need anybody, I'm in trouble. Because I need somebody for everything. There's nothing I do that I don't need other people for. Doesn't mean I can't be an individual. So just because I serve the family doesn't mean I'm dismissed, you know? So somebody said, well, well, can Elena just go buy whatever she wants? She, anything. But can it, like whatever, uh, anything. We already have an agreement. Like if we absolutely need it, it's a one or two, we do it. She, get it. If it's a three, it's a question mark we talk about. If it's a four or five, because money, money destroys a lot of these relationships. If it's a four or five, we're not doing it. End of story. I don't care how bad she wants it or I want it. So it's a one or two, we're doing it. We need it. We have to have it. It's important, okay? It, it somehow helps us survive better or gives us potential for more income or more connections or better health or whatever. If it's a three, we're going to talk about it until we figure out, man, eh, we don't really need that. Most threes, don't, you don't need anyway. It would have been a one or two. And fours and fives, look, we're just wasting time. This is bullshit. We don't need it. She's blowing up, dude. And I hope she keeps blowing up. You know, and I hope that we're able to just maintain that sense of, I don't want to use the word balance, but between becoming a doer, because, you know, I do enough already. <laughs> like I know. It's quite an orchestra you run in there, Grant. Yeah. Because it's not just your bunch of businesses you're trying to do. Then you got Elena there. You got the, the girls there. Yeah. And you're trying to hold it all together. Yeah. While and, and trying to take care of myself right. spiritually. Yeah. And physically. Yeah. And at 65, now now you got to start paying more attention to the body. Yeah. You said now you got to make sure every day you invest in that body. Dude, the body is going to break down. Yeah. So you know, unfortunately. I walk wrong or whatever, like like I'm having to pay more attention to that, which is t t terribly, yeah, I got away with so much stuff physically for so many years. I'm genetically built where I can just get away with stuff. But at some point you're like, oh yeah, you thought you were getting away with it, but it was this little tiny, little gradual decrease. And you've been walking like one way for so long now, that one knee, bang, it's the, now you got to re redo it. Because if you didn't pay attention, man, it, it, the old thing is use it or... Lose it. Yeah, it's use it or lose it. But the truth is use it or you never actually get to, like, use it, you know. And so now I have to figure out how to use stuff again. Bro, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I cannot imagine... I said this in Undercover Billionaire. I saw you since then, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, like when I was without any money in that trailer and it was 15 degrees outside and I had one bottle of water and no food, I was like, bro, this is real. I have no name, no money, no credit cards. I can't call any of my friends. I have one bottle of water, no food, 15 degrees, and I hate cold weather. Like, I don't even like this weather you guys have here right now, okay? I can't imagine, like, how hard it is to operate without money. It's hard to operate with it. Like, I'm, I'm describing this thing with all this money and success and the plane and all this stuff. Dude, it's hard with it. It's, like, it's paint, like, almost impossible without it. And that's probably the thing that drives me, man, to figure out. I'm just trying to figure out, Brian, like, how do I do all this? And then I think about all the other people out there on the planet, from the Gaza Strip to the people in Russia that are probably having a hard time right now, okay? To people in South America, like all over the world, whether you speak my language or not, to the black kid in Baltimore, inner city, doesn't have a dad at home, he's a single mom, like, dude, it's so hard. Life is hard. Is that what you learned by that moment in, in Undercover Billionaire, that, that there were people that needed you and you felt what it was like to be that low? Yeah. Yeah, and then I have my kids over there. I can't be with them. At that moment, it was worse having kids than not having them. Right. I'm like, I wish I didn't have them. I wouldn't miss them. At that moment, when I had nothing, I wish I had never had anything. Because now I had the comparison. Because when you never, when, like when I had nothing in the beginning at 23 years old, dude, I didn't, like, I didn't miss anything. 
But when you've had everything and you, you, you now, you know, by the way, it's still sitting over there. You, all you have to do is quit this right here and you can go have that tomorrow. It was so painful. It'd be better if I never had that. I remember when I I bought my first plane, a guy told me, Herb Chambers said, look, son, let me just tell you something. You know, I know you overcame a a terrible drug addiction. I said, yes, sir, what's that got to do with planes? He says, because you'll never overcome this one. I said, what? He's like, there's no recovering from a plane. Once you have one, it ruins your life. So if you're going to get a plane, if you're going to get a jet, a Gulfstream, you, you better make sure that you can keep that Gulfstream for the rest of your life, okay, until you no longer want or need one, okay, you better be sure you can use one because I'm going to tell you something. When you can't have one again, it's going to be the most painful thing of your lifetime. (laughs) I've heard that. Yeah. And he's right? Oh, yeah. Well, I I still have one. I mean, I have my third one now, so. But you thought about when if if it ended. Dude, I would never not want to have that. I cannot imagine. Like, once you have it, once you taste the fruit, man. You know, once you have something, you want it. You want to keep it. And, and I think people are scared to have stuff. Like, like I hear this thing people talk about, fear, fear of failure. You know, well, what if I really like it? You know, yeah. Or fear of success. Then, fear of success. That's a weird Fear of that's, success, yeah. That's a weird one because it doesn't make sense. It that makes no analytical sense. Yeah, but it's real. It's completely aberrated. Like you would say, I don't want success. I'm scared of success. Why? Because you don't think you can keep it. Because once I get it, everybody knows, okay, my responsibility is I have to hold on to it. It's like you got a bike as a kid, now you got to take care of it. Or you got a puppy. You know, you got a puppy, oh, now I got to take it outside. So that responsibility of holding on to it and then multiplying it. That's the game, though, man. And so the future of Grant Cardone is going bigger, going after the institutions, and collaboration more. You've been talking all about collaboration. I kind of want to end with that. Because you said the old Grant sometimes came off as combative because he was coming from a place of oh, scarcity. Oh, no, I was combative. <laughs> it didn't come off that way. It was... But you're saying that was maybe coming from a place of scarcity. Yeah. By the way, you've had to reprogram your mind, which is a very hard thing to do coming from that background you grew up yeah. with, with yeah. your mom and your dad. Yeah. And so you're trying to do this in real time while the plane's flying. But now you're trying to embrace this collaboration, abundance mindset, and you're doing like 10x more collabs than you've ever done in the last couple of years. And that's what you want to continue to do going forward. Is that weird for you to work with someone? Because it's uh, fun to compete with someone. Yeah, it, 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 well, yeah. I mean, the competition thing's a very low grade activity though. You know, I'm gonna beat you. It's a very low caveman kind of mentality. Because it suggests that I have to get something you could have gotten. Right. And, and so, um, yeah, giving that up, dude. When you're when you're as competitive as I have been for so many years, like that worked for me. You know, that's kind of what drove me. Was okay, I'm gonna catch up with you, and I'm gonna pass you. You know, to let that go. You know, when it got you to a place. You know, I remember I used to save money. When I was 25, okay, I need to save money. I didn't have any money. Okay, I got to get three thousand. I got to get ten thousand. I got to get a hundred thousand. I got to get two. Like once you save and then at some point you're like, okay, now what? Now what? Oh, keep saving? Well, you could. That's great for the bank. But at some point, that asset that I built, I couldn't save, that was a liability. Then I could save, that's an asset. But that asset at some point becomes a liability again. And so I have to shed that. Like I'm in shedding right now. I'm going through a shedding phase. I think people talk about seasons, but there's also a shedding between seasons. Like I'm shedding um, Grant Cardone. I'm shedding a skin right really? now. Of yourself? Uh, 100%. Interesting. Yeah, okay. I'm shedding. The marketer's gonna shed off, the sales guy's gonna shed off, the transactional guy, the competition guy, the bold, brash, I'm gonna shed. Really? And become another version for the last 20 years. Hmm. That will become probably quieter. Just mogul. Huh? Just the mogul. Institutional. Right. Okay. You've so, been shedding for a while now? A little bit. Do I've been you, working on the shed. Very consciously? painful. Very painful, dude. Consciously. Consciously. Because you're like, all right, I'm not going to be that guy anymore. I'm I, not going to think that way. I'm no, not no, gonna... no. I know where I'm going. Where I'm going has to be, okay, I got to get on my plane. I got to go meet with five inst- 
insurance companies that are boring. Okay, now I'm going to have to start doing some of this slower stuff that I despise, by the way. Right. But I hate, I was brought up to hate this. Okay. To hate the institutions. To like, like, like I remember my mom talking about anyone that had anything more than us was an institution. The car dealer was a threat. The plumber was a threat. Goldman was a threat. The bank was a threat, right? Everybody was a threat. Now I want to, I need to become the very thing that I have most um, despised. Figure out how to become the best version of that, though. So we'll see if I can pull it off. I got enough time. That's a cool challenge. Yeah. It's probably the ultimate challenge in life. It's been done, it's been done many times, though. You know, Wells Fargo, Merrill Lynch, Goldman Sachs. Start as the rebel and become the... J.P. Morgan. Right, okay. Yeah, so JP, you, yeah. I'll bet you 60% of your audience doesn't even know J.P. Morgan was an actual person. The actual story behind him, right? They think J.P. Morgan is a bank. Yeah, true. He was a person first. Yeah. And that person was very similar to, 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 to my kind of mock-up. Hmm. So that's an inspiration. Very much. Can you imagine one day, like 200 years from now, they just talk about... Cardone Capital. <laughs> right? Cardone Bank. And they don't Cardone even, Insurance. Right, that's happening. And it's they, happening. And then they have to drill down to find out your story and they'll watch this video. Oh, that guy was a pet. See me back when I was... Do you think about a thousand years from now? Yeah, I do. And what do you think? I'll, I'll be rocking this planet. You're still, you're still here somehow, right? One hundred. Yeah. I'm somewhere. Somewhere. Doing something. As someone or some entity. Something. My personality. This yeah. is my basic belief. This is my personal spiritual belief of what happens. And I, and I have the right to change my mind, by the way. Most powerful thing a human being can do, by the way, is to change your mind. To not get fixated on one idea. So I, what I think, a thousand years, you got to go out that far, dude, or just next lifeline? Next. Right, give me a, a 50, 100. Give me a 100 or 50. Okay. 100 years from now. You walk me to a thousand. Huh? Tell, okay, yeah, 100 years from now, 100 years from now. Let's, let's, let's figure this body's got 20 years left. Oh, you got more than that. Dude, that's 85. Yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm hitting on the extremes of... The situation. Let's say, right, let's say, let's say I go twenty-five years. Okay, maybe thirty. Give me ninety-five. Okay, thirty, thirty. Yeah, the last five are going to be painful. I know. I don't it's know. going to be nasty. I know guys but... in their seventies crushing it right now. I know yeah. a couple guys in their eighties crushing it. I don't know anybody in their nineties crushing. it. Yeah, it's like it's a bad look, dude. Okay. Nothing works anymore. Okay. Fuck, like you got to worry about fall slipping in the shower. If I can just tap out. All right. At some point, at some point, you got optimal, and then just tap well, out. It sounds like you got a next level, anyways. So. Well, maybe, All maybe, right. and maybe there'll be some big breakthroughs. Okay. But let's say I got 25 years. That would put us at what, 2045, 2047, 20, let's say 2050. Yeah, 2050. Bang. What I think happens is this personality, this basic personality who I am, not Grant Cardone, okay, not this physical 5A white, uh, this. The body goes and then the person out, the basic personality and all its memories and learning and education and development now take over another physical body. And bang, we go again. Newborn? Yeah, probably. Okay, but not necessarily. Newly born. Newly born. Newly born. Okay. Okay? Interesting. Okay, and this is all personal. Okay. This is not connected to anything. Uh, okay. any religion this is okay. me thinking kind of like okay. the dalai lama that's what happens right they go find the kid that's the next dalai lama and he's he, that spirit went yeah. to the next kid yeah and I, and I, and for everybody yeah 100% and i believe the spiritual unit that spiritual unit has enough intelligence to decide where it wants to go it could actually just hang out in some la la universe for a while floating amongst other whatever they're doing i don't know what they're doing anything because i like controlling the body the stronger the spirituality, the more choice it has, the more strength it has. Uh, uh, well, definitely the more aware. Okay. This is why this is why I, uh, I frown on drugs a bit because because drugs make you less aware, right? Amen. And so the more awareness the individual would have, the less occluded to also lies and myths and training and indoctrinations. Um and pain and unconsciousness, the more awake 
and analytical that spiritual unit is. Not Grant. Grant let's put Grant over here. Grant and Grant is dead now. Grant Cardone has expired. But this person, this inner energy, this whatever this thing is, this unit, which is way bigger than my body. It's not this unit. Right. It's without space or time or you can't measure it, you can't see it. You know, yeah. it's a big thought for a lot of people, but but this thing then adopts male, female, it chooses, it chooses, okay? Sabrina told me when she was, I don't know, six months, eight months, whenever she could talk, I guess that's a, around nine months, 10 months old, whatever. When did they start talking? Yeah, around then, yeah. nine, 10, nine, 10 months. We were, uh, maybe a year. She was, <laughs> I remember she had a rib, I, uh, Elena wanted her to be a, a vegan, and I said, well, let's let her decide. And I had this big, long freaking rib, right? And I gave it to her and she just started freaking <laughs> like a caveman. And we're talking, and I said, man, you know, we chose you, Sabrina, to come spend. She's like, you guys didn't choose me. I chose you. I looked right outside that window in here. I looked at some other families, too, and I picked you guys. I wanted to live with you guys. I picked you guys. You didn't pick me. I was like, wow. <laughs> I think that's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. And something happens in between these two moments, okay, where everything is forgotten, unfortunately. Right. About what happened last time. So a person can actually recover that, believe it or not. Right. It can be recovered that you can... Anyway, I didn't mean to end this damn thing with, with, with this big but idea. I like but this. but uh, uh, So 50 years from now, I'm going to pick. And I'm going to pick, okay, I'm going to be a man of service. I'm definitely coming back as a man. I'm never going to be a woman. Okay. Okay, sorry. Too hard. Shit's too hard, bro. <laughs> it's too hard. God damn, this is hard. That That is harder. Okay. Um, and I want to be a man of service. I want to come back with my education, though, man. I don't want to come back and have to remember. I don't want to start over. Like, every time, start over from scratch. I don't know how to drive. Yeah, okay. I kind of do. I've already do done that. I just need to be reminded. So I don't want to put through this dumb school system that makes everybody dumb again. You don't know math. I always knew math. This time, I knew math from the beginning. Okay? I, I, I consumed it like it was like nothing. So when they go into the math class, guess what? I'm not even watching. I get A's on everything. Just naturally. It, was, it meant nothing. Now, woodwork? Oh, my God. I, did, I don't know what they're talking about. I'm a complete fucking idiot. Okay? So I needed to listen because I didn't have a dad to show me anything. So I lost my confidence to do any woodwork. Mm -hmm. But if I could have tapped into any other lifetimes about woodwork, Man, the internet's going to eat this up. They're going to make me look like an idiot talking about others, okay? But most people have had some experience with something. If you've ever visited someplace, you're like, God damn, it feels like yeah. I've been here before, right? Yeah. Oh, man, I feel like I met you before. Yeah. Okay? Oh, I, I don't like that person. Why not? Okay? Uh, why, why does the, the uh, what do they call the kids that pick up the piano real quick? Uh, oh, yeah. Like what do they call them? Savants or something. Savants, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Where did that come from? Yeah. His mom couldn't do it. His dad couldn't do it. The, kid, the kids around him. Dude, there wasn't even a fucking piano in the house. And boom, the guy picks it up. Or he touches the violin or he starts painting. Where did that come from? Explain that to me. There's a lot going on that we don't understand. Exactly. But most people aren't prepared to admit that because it admits that you have limitations. We, we, we haven't even discovered 90% of the life in the ocean. Like, everybody should be curious so Cardone continues. Cardone continues. It's, and that, 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 that's been the attraction to my, to my church, okay? Right. Scientology is a, is a, people that go there are curious about what they don't know. They're not there to defend what they already know. They're curious. The reason I went to the Church of Scientology was I was curious about what I didn't know and thought, maybe, or what wasn't working. I was looking around and said, why are all these religions fighting each other? That's not, that's, I don't know what's so godly about that. Why am I going to go to hell? Because I masturbated when I was 12. Like, that, it, it just didn't make sense to me. Like, why, hey, I stole some money from the grocery store, 75 cents from the grocery store, and that, I am going to spend, I'm going to be damned to a thousand years or 10,000 years with a devil. I was like, I don't know, it's something, I believe in the God thing, 100%, never question it, absolutely believe in God. But I'm like, I don't get all this hate 
and damnation stuff. It, it was confusing. I didn't know the answer. I was just curious, can I know? Oh yeah, if you look. Can I know how to build a family and keep, how do I become a great parent? You know, how do I have manifest more energy? How could I manifest my dreams and make them a reality? How could I actually be more productive? And I'm not a slave to time, but I could actually create it. There's all these courses on that. And so that's why I went there because I was curious about my potential here right now. And what about next time? Yeah. Yeah. And I noticed that about you, I think in our second sit down, I always say you have a spiritual connection to your wealth and to your creations. And people don't, another thing they don't understand about you is that you are just kind of way up there when it comes to the spiritual side. Although nothing on Instagram would, would show that about you. Yeah. But that is why I think you're so successful in this life is because for you, this is just the beginning of the journey. You know, you're not like, this is over in 20 years. You're like, man, we're going the next level, the next level, the next level. You always say, I'm, I'm a spiritual having a human experience. You've yeah. told me that for a long time. Yeah, 100%. And, and that the proof is in the pudding. I think your results Dude, are when I, on when I look at our real estate, the real estate has a spiritual component to me. I'm looking at it saying, oh, this is a good neighborhood. This feels good. The people here are good. Like, we can contribute here. There's an exchange. It's not, I bought a house or I bought something. I lived in it. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about something that gives to the whole community. You know, I don't, I've never done Section 8 because it doesn't, Section 8 is uh, government housing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel good to me. It feels depriving and slavery-like and suppressive and oppressive, even though there's a lot of money to be made there. The comment you made about Grant, you probably wouldn't have done well on Wall Street because it was so empty feeling. You, you might be right. Like, I couldn't have made it there. I never, ever spent time in the country clubs with the rich people because there's something about it that never felt spiritually alive to me. You know, I would much rather raise money with regular people that benefit because there's something spiritual that, that's flowing as opposed to doing one deal with JP Morgan and they give me $100 million or a billion dollars. We do one transaction. What happened? It went, money went to an institution. I, I, I don't know how we made a difference. You know, and, and, and I don't want to just be the only winner, by the way. I can get super rich like that. But I want to see, like, the thing that, Brian, that makes me the happiest other than my kids. Sending somebody 2500 bucks every month and having them call me. Man, you sent me $32,000 last year, bro. I sent my kids to school on that. I'm like, that's cool. The send is better than the take. It is better to give than receive. I think the Bible says that somewhere, but it is better to give than receive, but it's better to give over and over and over and over again than it is to receive one thing. So that's, I am a very spiritual man, but, but, I, but I'm stuck, I'm, I'm stuck in this kind of material mock-up of achievement right. that, 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 that obscures this other thing agenda that I have. With a lot of baggage. Don't tell anybody, training. by the way. <laughs> and you're shedding those layers. Yeah. And then you get it ready for the next level. Yeah. Because ultimately, I think you, you believe we're all one somehow. And I think by giving back to that humanity, that ultimately is important to you and your feelings. Yeah, 100%. I say to my students all the time, like, I'm like, I want to make you rich. Uh -huh. But when I tried to make myself rich, I ended up drinking myself to death and I was alone and completely miserable. But man, in fact, I said, when I, I said, I want you all rolling with the jets, with the this, with the that, I'm gonna be so happy. Yeah. It, just, it just makes me so excited. And empowering the right entrepreneurs to do the right things in this world, that gets me pumped up. Totally. Sharing man. The, right, the right messages out to my people. Like that is the reason I'm sober now. That's the reason I'm happy yeah. now. So there's something there that's, um, that's, uh, that's hard to describe to people. And we're not sold that in all our mainstream media and MTV and TikTok videos, we're sold the opposite but that contribution's a key thing. And I think you would have been successful on Wall Street, but then you would have been massively unhappy. Mm -hmm. And you meet those guys all the time. I'm sure you know them. And they're super successful, and yet something's empty, something's missing. Well, I know, I'm meeting, I'm meeting them now, and yeah. I can tell they have a look in their eye about like, Bro, what's, like, what's it like to be you? Yeah. I remember I asked a to guy. To be free. To you be can you. tell they're, 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 they're not sure what they're interested in exactly. Right. They're but they, 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 they're like, do you have a freedom? Um, Damon John said this to me. He's like, sure, good thing you didn't get that Shark Tank deal, huh? 
I said, what do you mean? I said, man, I wanted that. He's like, you couldn't be you if you were on Shark Tank. Look at, look at what you do every day. You know, so. That's powerful. That's the ultimate. That's freedom. The, that's the ultimate flex is your own freedom. Yeah. And being you. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I worry about America. Like, is America going to continue to be that place where I get to flex being me? Or are they going to start shutting more and more people like me down and like you down? I hope not. Well, let's keep fighting. Make sure it doesn't happen. Let's get you to be mayor in London, man. All right, let's One do start. that. The mayor, and then, then what would the next be? We make you mayor. What's the next thing after I'll that? I'll come to America. I'll run the place if you want. I'm still a citizen. Well, let's go. <laughs> or are you going to run, maybe? I'll be your VP. You know, it's the thing that you, we were talking about this in the yeah. elevator, right? It's the thing I fear more than any other thing. Is, is running for office. Running for office. Why? Well, two things. One, I don't know that I could win. I don't want to lose. That, that, that scares me. Two, I would get butchered in the media. The second one doesn't probably scare me as much as the first one. The second one will probably inspire me for the fight because I do like some of that, act, that action. You know, I like being bullied. It, it somehow emboldens me to do something um, creatively responsive that gives other people inspiration that the little guy is still really in charge. The David and Goliath thing is a real deal. Okay. I don't know if it happened, but it's happening in my life. Right, right. So that means you have to do this thing, man. It's the I ultimate don't know, test. I don't, I don't know the ultimate thing. growth experience. Yeah. The ultimate shedding moment. I think I'm more likely to start a big super pack. Okay. First. That's a step. Yeah. That's a step. And then, and then start moving some some things around they say if you want to uh if you uh, if you want to determine the future you create it right yeah so that's the best way the so best that, way that's what we do every day yeah just just make it happen in the face of adversity and all this other stuff so that's the plan right grant cardone it's the plan i want to thank you for going deep yet again i don't know if it's what it is maybe it's the air here in london but you always keep it super real when you oh, come thanks here. man so I appreciate you. I hope people get to know even a little bit of a sliver of the real Cardone because there's a lot going on underneath the hood. Yeah. A lot. Well, you see it. You see it. You're, you're, you, you do one of the best interviews of anybody that I've ever sat with. You see it. You're present. You know, like you got your notes and everything, the things you want to go over. But once you have them, then you let it go. And then you're just with me. And, and, and it, makes it, it makes it super cool that you can do that. And like two or three times today, I was like, oh, dude, he's actually present for the conversation, not just trying to get your next note in. Yeah. So thank you. My pleasure, man. Appreciate it. My pleasure, you, man. man. I, I've, it's been a real treasure getting to know you and and Elena and then a little bit with Sabrina. And man, every time anyone ever asks me about you, man, I'll just say, you don't fucking know. Thank Grant's you, Grant's the real motherfucking deal, man. And he's a, an incredible guy. And uh, man, wishing you all the success, man. Appreciate you, Thanks man. for coming thank in, you. Man. Thank right, you. Big love. Thank you. <laughs>